Hello and welcome back to Dial H for Hero Clicks. I'm your sexy ranch hand co-host Calderness. This is episode 423. We're going to be talking about some new Ten of Swords figures that got spoiled over there on the Facebooks and answer quite a few listener questions and some of my favorite listener questions that we've gotten in a long time. Howdy howdy, let's get rowdy. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like a hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six yeah. people yeah. think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which absolute fools? It's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> Hey, Google, back something. Let's attack because he's a jerk. Wow, wow, wow. HeroClicks is brought to you by CoolStuffInc.com, where you can find cool stuff in stock every day, including all the latest HeroClicks singles and sealed products. Make sure you check them out at CoolStuffInc.com. Use code DIAL5, that's D-I-A-L-5, for 5% off Cool Stuff Inc. order. If this is your first podcast, your first episode of Dialogue for Heroes you're listening to. Check out the link in the description below for our new player episode, our new Clicks on the Block episode. So if you're new to Hero Clicks, it's got all sorts of fun information in that episode about finding a play group, uh, what to buy when you get started, how to learn the game, all sorts of fun stuff. Definitely check that one out. And uh, thank you so much for listening. Joining me, like always, in the studio is Simeon Bruce. What's going on, Simeon? Uh, not much going on, you know? I actually... For the first time in a long time, Calder can't say that I was depressed this week. I had a good week. Oh, a lot of, yes. A lot of, lot of good things happen. Good. Too many um, to probably actually say, but uh, yeah, good week. Um, well, hey, kick us off with your good week, man. What made you happy this week? I, I love it. Non-depressed Simeon, this is going to be a good <laughs> show. <laughs> yeah. So first and foremost... Um, if your name is Austin or Dave, uh, go ahead and turn the podcast off because <laughs> this is not for you. Uh, no. Um, so I I had a work function. We had a work party because we hit some sales goals. Really cool. We went mini bowling. I had been to uh, Bob and Willie's mini bowling in Omaha a few times. Okay. There's, so first of all, side tangent – Mini bowling has been around for a long time. There's okay, actually like, like I have no idea what you're talking about. There's right? multiple time types of mini bowling, and it's crazy because there was a uh, poster on the wall that was like 1968 to 1969. Um, there was a poster on the wall that was like 1968 to 1969, and I was like, I don't think mini bowling was around in 1968. That seems crazy, but then I looked it up. As I was there, and yeah, mini bowling or oh. let's see, what do they call it? Um, an actual name for like mini bowling. Uh, let's see, it's called like not chicken bowling. It's called uh, so there is ten pin bowling, which is what most people know as actual bowling. There's nine pin bowling or kegel uh, type of bowling. There's a five pin bowling, which is a type of bowling that's played in Canada. So we'll have to ask Luke about that. But that was formed in 1909. Yeah. Candle pin okay. bowling. So candle pin bowling is... I don't know why it's called candle pin bowling, but if you look at it, it looks like more like the cricket like little pins where they're just straight. There's no like... Normal bowling pins are like uh, pear-shaped with like a little right, head curved. on top. Yeah. yeah. Candle pins are straight. They're just... They are what they are. They're little tiny sticks. Um, that was invented in the 1880s. So it's different than classic 10-pin bowling because mm. the pins are not arranged in the triangle formation. They're in like two horizontal oh. rolls. And you bowl more like than just two balls per frame. Um, okay. Then So this type, mini bowling, is closer to duck pin bowling than the like 10-pin bowling that is most people are accustomed to so duck pin bowling once again developed in like the 1800s uh i think it might actually predate normal 10 pin bowling but i'm not positive on this so duck pin bowling is still 10 pins and it's similar to like 10 pin because you know it's it's set up the pins are all set up the same uh but the 
the pins are shorter and normally fatter than like 10 pins. So like they're a lot wider towards the bottom, but they're also a lot smaller than like the 10 pin ones. Um, and so it's a lot harder to like hit strikes with duck pin bowlings because like the, the pins are just smaller. So harder they're not going to, gonna, tip over and... yeah, they're not going to like cascade yeah. like dominoes. Hmm. So you get three bowls in tent and duck pin bowling. Um, Bob and Willie's is just mini bowling. So it is literally 10 pin bowling shrunk down to duck pin size ish because even duck pin size doesn't really make sense for this. So it's literally just shrunk down 10 pin bowling, which makes it really hard to hit a strike. Uh, but oh. this is what we did. Mm. Yeah. So like normal, normal yeah. 10 pin, you would hit a pin and it could fall and hit another pin and right. mini yeah. bowling in this like style of mini bowling you could hit a pin and it could fall straight back and just not touch another pin or it could fall oh, at like is, an angle and not is, touch another pin uh, it's, bummer. yeah <laughs> i don't it's like that real hard it's, to hit strikes in case the listener doesn't know real golf is pretty hard and mini golf is much much easier than real golf so when you say mini bowling to me it sounds like it should yeah. be easier than normal bowling no currently kind of sounds like it's harder um, but yeah. continue. <laughs> I'm enthralled. So to get to get back to, I had to describe what was happening. Uh, right. So my whole uh, my whole crew was there, uh, like the sales crew, um, uh, like the guys I work with, uh, like the well, there's a, there was a few people missing, I guess, but almost everyone from our shop was there, and it was really cool. We were having a lot of fun. Uh, it was really exciting because, like, when you did hit a strike, it was pretty random. There's a few people that were obviously a lot better than others, but um, it was pretty fun. And the one thing that, like, m- this mini bowling in particular is different than normal bowling is when I used to bowl in normal bowling because, believe it or not, where I grew up, Kearney had a bowling alley like most small towns do. They're like, oh, yeah. what, what do we need to invest in? A bowling alley. That's what. Me and my friends would never bowl to see who could bowl like the best. We would never be like, who gets the high score? We literally bowled because the bowling alley had a indicator that would tell you how fast the ball went when it hit the pins. So we always bowled to see who could throw the ball the hardest and get the highest speed. So, like, my record was, like, 42.2, and I think the sensors were bad. I don't think they were, like, accurate, because I don't know if I can actually throw a bowling pin 42 miles an hour. But that was my record. That was my personal record. And so that was literally, like, our game. Like, the normal game was knock down the pins as best as you could, but we were all garbage at that. So we would just literally throw the balls as hard as possible while keeping them on the ground and see how fast we could throw them. And so, like, whether it was a gutter ball or actually hit pins or not, like, didn't matter. It was, like, you know, did you get 38.2? Did you get 41.3? Like, what did you get? And I always used the heaviest ball possible. I always, you know, like the 16-ounce or whatever it was. Um, 16 ounces, one pound, so that doesn't sound right, but probably no. like 16 pounds is there a 16 pound ball i don't know oh, it was always yeah probably. not not the bright pearlescent pink one it was always like the the black mat because that was like yeah, the go. manly ball where like the holes were too big my, for my fingers but i i still just i got two fingers hooked and uh, that's what i threw with um mini bowling is cool you don't need you don't need the special shoes uh the lane oh, nice. is I'm gonna say, and I don't know if this is wrong, but I'm gonna say it's a quarter of the like the width as a normal bowling lane. It's very thin. Oh. The distance yeah. from where you bowl to like with the pins, also probably like a third to like half length. It's at least like a third of the length. Um, so there's not a lot of spin you can put on the balls. I was trying to do a little bit of tricky trickery with the balls. But the balls are also, uh, let's see, it's like more than softball sized, but not much more. So the balls that you're actually bowling with are pretty small compared. They're like shot put. It's like a shot put that you're like rolling down an alley. And man, it's just, it's really hard to hit the pins. 
it's really hard to pick up a spare if you knock down nine pins like rolling accurately with such a small ball and such a small pin it's very hard so there's a few times i impressed myself with like the right curvature and stuff and then there was multiple times where i was like yep that's about right where i just missed everything and guttered it because that was more often than not um i think i hit one strike and then there was at least two times where i guttered the first ball and then hit a strike afterwards to hit a spare and i was like wow I can't hit a strike to save my life, but I can gutter a ball and then hit a strike, giving me a spare. Um, but yeah, it was really cool. We hung out for a while. Uh, we had several nice drinks. It's a it's a pretty cool place in Omaha. It is a little expensive, so if you're in the Omaha area and you want to do mini bowling, hit me up because I will... Uh, let's see. if If you want to do mini bowling in Omaha... And you're worried about the price. I will definitely join you if you cover my costs. Because I will I will <laughs> happily bowl for free there. And then you'll be like, hey, he's here. And I'll be like, yes, yes, I am. And you'll be like, yeah, this is so much better. I'm like, well, is it? Probably not. If you pay for me, and I, okay, yeah, Simeon, it's really pay, hard I to argue come. with that flawless logic. Yeah, it's it's uh, expensive, but down. If it's expensive, I'll show but up if you, if you pay also... For it. But if you pay for not only yourself and me, <laughs> I will also be there. All right. I know it'll be expensive for you, but not but not for me, which is all that exactly. I really care exactly. about. Exactly. That's that's the main oh contention. My yeah. Uh, and then speaking of expensive, I've already okay. gone quite a ways into this. I was about to say we are ten minutes into mini bowling. <laughs> We're no longer in probably, mini bowling. Probably not. Um, probably not. But I did go to Worlds of Fun this Friday. So. Ooh. After no mini idea bowling, which what that is. I will say, you don't know what Worlds of Fun is, man. I've now I'm going to have to go a second time I've this summer just never to educate once, you. I've never once had fun a day in my life, let alone a world of fun. So, Well, you will not have a world of fun here. That's for <sighs> sure. Uh, you will have a amount of fun. Um, okay. But yeah, after after drinking quite heavily um, on, on my <laughs> company's dime, um, I woke up in the early morning of Friday and... Decided to take my my friend's kids to Worlds of Fun, where, uh, you know, it's about three hours away. It's down in Kansas City, right outside of Kansas City. I shouldn't say Kansas City. It's literally outskirts of Kansas City. You don't have to drive into, like, the the real hectic part of Kansas City, where there's, like, several lanes merging in every different direction. It's right before that, so it's really nice. I actually enjoy the drive because it's two lanes most of the way. Then there's a very special lane that is just for Worlds of Fun. It's like called Worlds of Fun Boulevard what? or something. Okay. And they have their own special lane. Uh, but we go to Worlds of Fun, and if you don't know what it is, it's an amusement park. It has roller coasters. It's got some of the better roller coasters in the country. Um, I won't say like it's in the top five or anything. I don't really know. I don't pay attention to that kind of stuff. But they've they've got the Mamba. They've got the prowler i kept calling it the panther but it's it's some sort of i think it's called the prowler um so there's the the mamba the the prowler the one that calder really wants to go on it's called the patriot they say, oh yeah uh, baby. <laughs> what do they say every time there's like a robot voice that says uh once the ride's about to take off it says heads up patriot time for takeoff and then like the like roller coaster goes away <laughs> that's <laughs> like so, it's so based and it's funny it's, awesome. it's funny uh but like yeah we we went on all of them uh well i went on all of them the the rest of my party only went on right. all, I, some I, of them i assume the little kids won't be able to get on every ride right yeah they there are, there is yeah. a yeah there's like a height requirement for some of them just surprising because it's like it did based get... on your height you shouldn't be able to get on every ride <laughs> well let's hey oh yeah. got him I am only right. uh, 58 inches wide, so oh. every time I laid on my side, they had to be like, I don't know if you'll yeah. fit. Uh, no. <laughs> uh, the only ride that we weren't able to go on was the swings, which is, like, I say swings. Uh, it goes, like, 100 feet in the air, and then you're in a oh. swing, like, seat, and it spins you 100 feet in the air. So it's not, like, normal swings, 
it is terrifying swings but right. this is the that second is time in a row where i haven't been able to go on those because there was a wind warning in effect but i was still able to go on the um the double dragon is what i call it i i can't remember what it's called it's something dragon okay, but game. it's it's like a spinning dragon or something. Uh, the Patriot, I was still able to go on. I was still able to go on the like Drop of Doom, which is the one that just shoots straight up and then drops down. And I was like, this is Wait my now. job. This That's is what classic. I do at work, except much faster. Um, classic ride. Yeah. The Mamba. The, the... Mamba is probably one of the cooler ones because it, it's one of like the larger, taller ones. And it's not as like jerky motions. Patriot's also really fun because it does like a ton of loops and stuff, but it's super smooth. So like the ride just like doesn't like jostle you. The one I refuse to go on is the Timberwolf because last time I went on it, it was like instant headache. It's this old rickety ride oh. and it's on like the wooden tracks. So it oh, I, I your never head back and forth. I don't have the guts to go on those rides when they're like, it's the it's a wooden roller coaster. I'm like, nah. Ah, uh, miss me with that, bro. Wood. How is that a Plus selling it's point? Super old. Yeah, I don't get that. Like, it's like, look, it's an engineering marvel. I'm like, yeah. I mean, sure. Yeah. They're like, if I'm looking at a sculpture. I'm like, you, that's so. Cool. It's the world's oldest roller coaster made out of balsa wood and like toothpicks and stuff. And you're like, yeah, you're. You just told me you're gonna send me like 60 miles an hour into a turn. Yeah, and you're expecting me to plan on that wood to hold it like i can i, hope I can those... look from here and see that that wood hasn't been like maintained there's cracks oh, and like the splinters and all stuff. peeling off yeah. and stuff and nobody's like, painted it this so nobody's like oh nobody's gosh. out there every summer like resealing it so it doesn't rot like what are you talking nope. about this is nightmarish um i did go on one wooden one but it was not the timberwolf because okay. quite literally the last time i went on the timberwolf it was like the second to last roller coaster i went on that day and it gave me an instant headache like it's a 30 second oh, ride sure. and by the end of it yeah. my head was just pounding because well my joints aren't the same as they used to be so like i'm not i'm not a little squishy <laughs> baby with like all these flexible parts you jerk me too many oh. times in the wrong direction and i'm just done for the day um but yeah world's of fun was <laughs> Good. Worlds of Fun was really fun. Good. I really I love roller coasters. I love heights. I love scary things. Um, they also had so not only was the swings shut down, but they also had the the weird slingshot where they like pull you up in like this little oh, swing seat thing, I just, and then I they like, that. launch that one you. Sounds so scary. Yeah, that one was also closed. That's like one that I've oh, always yeah. wanted to do, but most of the time I either don't want to pay the money or like this time it was just closed. But, uh, man, Calder, you're a man of culture and taste. Sure. You're a you're a big beef guy, right? I've been accused. Oh, yeah, yeah, no, absolutely, yeah. Tell me, a normal, let's say, like a, an 80-20% beef, what would you pay for a double cheeseburger with a side of fries? It's like a $15, $16 meal, right? Double cheeseburger, side of fries? If I'm thinking, like, at a theme park? At a it's theme, like 16 yeah, bucks. so it was sixteen ninety nine. Okay, whoa, I was right on and the money. Then for like the refillable drink, it was another sixteen ninety nine. What? If you just wanted, so <laughs> I'll tell you what the total came out for for one of these meals because we ended up getting four of them. So for one of these meals. The total came out to twenty one fifty. Jeez, with yikes! A, okay, a simple, a unflavored a double cheeseburger. You had to put your own ketchup and mustard on it. The pickles what, were what's, like, what is the what's the circumference? What's that patty size? These oh, like half pound patties, no, these quarter pounders. No, these are, are they're better than gas station burgers. But this is a uh, oh, that's not a high bar, Simeon. No, this I would say we're somewhere in the range of. A quarter pound patty, maybe. I don't know. It's pretty okay. thin. Yeah, the pickles were like homemade style, so they were very vinegary cucumbers. Oh, sure. Not sure. the kind of pickles that I like. It's like I don't even classify it as a pickle. I was like, this would be great on a salad, not so good on a burger. Um, no. 
Then I stood in line after I ate this. I stood in line for almost 50 minutes to get on the little uh, water raft ride. And as I'm like halfway through the line, almost to the front, I can see, I can see like, oh, there's about like six groups in front of me. Uh, the groups start walking back towards me and they start yelling, rides closed, rides uh-huh. closed. And uh, so I was like, thank you. You wasted 50 minutes of my time and I, I have no recourse. Or... I cannot get this time back. There's not like I can't go up to somebody at Worlds of Fun and be like, can I please get a voucher for a free ride on XYZ? No. Uh, a line pass, something, yeah. yeah. I will say next time I go there, it's either going to be closer towards the winter or closer towards like the spring like off season kind of time or it'll be um after school starts on like a weekday because that was the one the one major thing for me was just waiting in line like the patriot for whatever reason the best ride i i think in the park had zero line Zero huh. line, like you could have rode the Patriot Got a bunch back of commies back in this over park, huh? and over and over again. Yeah, yeah. Panda Ex- Panda Express and uh, Pagoda Nachos had a longer line than the Patriot. Disgusting. Tell me what a Pagoda Panda Nacho Express is. is. So low tier food. I mean, Panda Express was probably cheaper than those burgers, though. I mean, yeah, uh, probably. All I know is Pagoda Nachos like makes zero sense in my brain. So does uh, the Gorilla Grill. Gorilla Grill. Because there was no gorilla o, grill. No O in the Gorilla. It was just Gorilla Grill. Gorilla um, Grill. Yeah, there's... <laughs> going through there. I don't want to be like a social justice warrior or anything, but going through <laughs> Worlds of Fun, there was a lot of cultural appropriation going on. Oh, it's been a while well? since I've gone through there, but they were like... Uh, like gy- gypsy mercantile market. And I was oh, like, mm, oh, there we go. Uh, uh, is that what baby. you call it? Like, I, I don't know. But anyways, yeah. it means uh, I talked about what made me happy uh, for almost 20 minutes now. So it's I'm been, going to. Mm, yeah. Eight, yeah. 12 minutes at least. 12 minutes at least. No, 16 minutes at least. Uh, I did start. A t- I did start a timer though. Uh, all since the beginning of the show. Anyways, uh, so not to say all that stuff doesn't sound great. It does all sound great, but by law, I do have to tell you. Happy this. Oh, I'm gonna try to brief, so that we can get onto the hero clicks portion of the show, which people might be forgetting. We are hero yeah. clicks podcast. Um, a big surprise. It was Evil Dead the game. Uh, they had a update this week that dropped a new map and drop some new skins and some bug fixes, some reworks for some characters. And I was pumped. So they added an exploration mode uh, where you can now free play, check out all the maps with no timer at all. So that, that's really cool. They added the new Castle Kandar map, which is basically the setting of Army of Darkness, the third Evil Dead movie, uh, which I was pumped for. Obviously, my favorite Evil Dead film, maybe my favorite movie in general. Uh, so I was super excited to play the map. Had to play a lot of Demon the day it dropped because it was almost impossible to find a game as Survivor, which is a bit of a bummer. Um, no one likes playing the bad guy. I don't like, yeah, see, and that's totally fair. Like, majority, dude, it's it's a sweat fest playing Demon. It's, you're, you always got to be on top of it. It's not like Survivor where it's like, oh, just jog to the next location, no enemies whatever demons like i gotta level up gotta level up gotta find the survivors gotta oh gotta set traps ooh, ah, ooh. and it's just like geez stressful man <laughs> i can't be sweating for the full 30 minutes of these games goodness gracious if you're on voice um, mic like that ooh, gotta set some traps gotta, oh, yeah, dude. Yeah, 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 yeah. I, that'd be a pretty good demon cool. voice i know hey hey you know what they should saber, so, saber interact i don't call I'm me not, this will be the last saber. time i uh interject on your oh, what made fine. you happy okay if they took the like the demon uh player's voice mic and like altered it like stretched it and made it like sound all kind of crazy and stuff so it was like got to take this trap take trap and blah blah like if they did that like stretched it and made it all like wonky and stuff that'd be hilarious that'd be like terrifying and really good like you could almost make out what they're saying what like the demon was saying 
but in like the worst possible way. That'd be great. The demon's like a Twitch streamer, so it's like, thank you for the five dollars. <laughs> <laughs> <Like>, okay. <laughs> like, uh, no, I do wish that. So there's like this time right at the end of a match, whether the demon wins or the team wins. There's about two seconds. I really wish. It would let you hear each other through mic for like that last two seconds. You could like yell at each other or be like GG GG, but more more likely yell at each other. I I would love it. That amount of toxicity is what I want in my video games. It doesn't have to be the Xbox Live, you know, 360 like toxicity, Call of Duty lobby type stuff, but just just to yell at them, be like, yo, demon, you can possess these nuts or something, you know, like <laughs> it'd be great. It would just be it would be fantastic. Um uh, no, but the Castle Kandar map added added two weapons, which absolutely slap. Um, I was playing Warrior Ash, which is the melee heavy class, um, and I have I have a one handed build for him because like a chainsaw uses one hand or I guess lack thereof. Uh, but I found the new weapon, the mace, a legendary mace, like right away in this game, and I was like, this is awesome. I get to use a new weapon. I get to see what like the finishers look like for the weapon, and it's a legendary, and I've got a build like specced around it. Like this is perfect. Uh, and then two matches later, I'm playing Hunter Ash, is Evil Dead 2, who's the range-based Ash, and I find another legendary weapon of the other new weapon they added, which is the explosive crossbow, which is just a crossbow with a grenade on it, basically. A little gunpowder sack or something is on the tip of the arrow. Um, and it's great because I'm not the best at aiming in games. That's why I like melee combat or you know, shotguns or something with like a widespread or something. So I'm not like a sniper type guy. That's not me. I'm not that guy. Um, but with the crossbow, you just got to shoot the ground by their feet. And you just oh, destroy. Nice. It's awesome. So it's so good. Like first I was like trying to like worry about getting headshots. And I was like, ah, oh, what am I doing? Cause I was like watching like the arrow explode like 10 yards off in the distance. And I was like, no, 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 just, shoot their legs man <laughs> it's, it's <laughs> awesome they're just blowing up it's so good it does suck when the demon possesses you and then does that to your t- i will say that is a little rough um but like the explosive crossbow might be one of my new favorite weapons just by the fact that it is just a grenade launcher you've given me and so it's yeah it's so the way good. it's so the way fun. explosive crossbows work in most like multiplayer shooters are it's pretty awesome it's like if you get a direct hit, then it's just a grenade that is stuck to the person. And right. Uh, if you don't get a direct hit and they don't move away, then yeah. Boom. <laughs> Comes the boom. Thank you, Kevin James. Comes the boom. It's so good. It, it literally is so good. So yeah, haven't just been having a blast playing Evil Dead this week. Uh, it has been just a ton of fun. And if you, listener, play Evil Dead the game or are interested in it from my consistent ramblings for the past like two months about it uh then yo download it's 40 bucks to me that's like super cheap for a game uh, a new game anyways and if you want to play online i try to get on a play which i've been honestly trying to play like once a day you know some days i can't you know get on a play it but i have been making playing this game like a priority um and yeah for those wondering yeah i've got a half written script for the disney plus pitch meeting and it'll get done but <laughs> priorities do say evil dead the game is the highest pri- no i'm just yeah. the script the pitch meeting is almost done you can expect disney plus pitch meeting eh, maybe next week we'll say maybe next week i don't want to, i don't want to lock in anything i don't want to be uh making any promises but yeah. uh but yeah evil dead the game good stuff i will say i beat fallen order jedi fallen order Ooh. Um, last week, so I think I only talked about it on the I, podcast once, but I, I, I beat it. You. I ended up beating it. Um, I'm not at like a hundred percent, so I do have like one uh, random like mission. scan the correct things kind of uh, whatever trophy okay. left. So I've got all but one trophy, um, but I moved on to a better uh, force power kind of game called Ooh. Control. So it's in the Alan Wake universe. Have okay, you seen I love Control? It. I have not seen Control. I have watched playthroughs if of you like both Alan Wake's American Nightmare and the normal Alan Wake. If you like like I, I season one Wake. of Stranger Things or you just like odd horror kind of concepts, Control is like pretty it's like quite literally like when I started it and I started playing it and stuff, I, I had seen some playthroughs and some like kind of gameplay right. stuff. 
I started playing it and I was like, this is terrifying because you look Ooh. like at the very beginning, like you have no idea what's going on. And it's slowly kind of like, it's like an SCP kind of thing where it's like this super secret government organization has like collected these objects and like blah, blah, blah. They've been invaded by the whisper or whatever they call Ooh, it. The whisper. Um, dark but, uh, forest. Okay. Yeah, you, you start going into, like, different rooms, and you, like, talk to this quite menacing-looking, like, you, you're you going through this empty building, and then all of a sudden there's just, just this janitor, and for some reason he's the scariest dude in, like, the whole game that I've come across, because there's nobody, and then all of a sudden there's this janitor, and you're like, oh, what's he gonna do to me? And then he <laughs> just, like, turns around, and he's like, hey, you here to be the janitor's apprentice? You better go to the elevator. And I was like, oh, he's got earbuds in. What's he going to do? And he's like, all right, see you later. And then you just leave. And I like never see him again, or at least at the point in the game where I am. I've never seen him again. So, so it's just like, like no. Anderman, no. I, 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 I misjudged this janitor because I Dead. truly thought he was going to try and murder me. But it's like a very atmospheric game. So it's pretty crazy okay. first couple like levels. But uh, the reason why I tie it to Jedi file, Fallen Order is because you get way better force powers and control. <laughs> I'm a way well, better Jedi the thing, though. in like, the modern, modern day shooty, blasty game than I am in Jedi Fallen Order where I've got a sword and I'm like slowing people down. It's the, in control, I'm like, I'm going to lift this whole fridge and throw it at your face. You're going to have to uh, take that up with LucasArts. And yeah, tell them Something. like, how dare you make a game? Because controls like two, three years old now. How dare you not old? let me play a Star Killer and like crumble an entire stormtrooper yeah. into a ball the size? Yeah, of, I would like, like to crumple him like a piece of paper, please. Just like, and, like the densest right. star ever created, created yeah. by Star Killer out of stormtroopers. Oh gosh, <laughs> it will now power <laughs> the Death Star. Oh my gosh! I don't know if wow. you knew that. A lot of power. Yeah, that's how Death Stars were powered. Were super collapsed stars. stormtroopers. Oh yeah, of course, yeah. super collapsed. What I said, and that was dumb. Uh, <laughs> uh, no, you mentioned Stranger Things. I guess I will. I will say I did finish that this. Week. So my family, we had like two episodes left. We didn't know we had two episodes left, but yesterday we watched episode eight. And we were like, "Wow, that was really good," and we were like, "Man." Next episode, let's just like see how long it is because maybe we can watch it. You know, they've all been like an hour, like an hour 40 minutes, like crazy long. And so it's like 8 30 at night by the time we finish this episode. We check and we're like, oh my gosh, this the final episode is, is a movie, it's two hours and 20 minutes. Holy it's cow. it's just a, it's just a movie, yeah. And I was like, yeah, good lord, literally. like that's that's fame, like that's an episode of TV. You want me to Duffer Brothers? What are you doing to me right now? <laughs> um, but we're but it was still at the. I'm not going to spoil it, but it was like this character's over here and this one's over here and like this one's on the verge of blah blah blah. And you're just like, I I want to know what happens, but but yeah, two hours be. and twenty minutes. So we do we lie to ourselves and we're like, well, dinner just got done. Look it out of the oven. We're like, all right, let's let's just eat it while we're you know eat it. <laughs> let's watch it while we're eating dinner. And we'll, you know, once we're finished, we'll we'll stop. That, we lied to ourselves there. We're like, we'll watch for the thirty minutes, and then we'll turn it off and we'll finish it tomorrow. Oh no! I've, uh, I've now we got some it. green beans on my plate. I, we we can't stop. <laughs> yeah. I got some green beans no, on my plate. No joke. No, it came time where it was like we were eating slower and slower, and it maybe took us an hour <laughs> to get through dinner. And was then there, like the was there no dessert? Just... Mom, was, you know, there there, was... was there no dessert for this oh, dinner? <laughs> um, but yeah. <laughs> Yeah, we watched it all, and I was like, dang, you had two hours and 20 minutes, and I don't know if this is or not, but you still ended on a cliffhanger. Now you're going to make me wait two years until season five comes out. Oh, man. Which I think is the last season. Um, And it's like, cool, there's a lot of great moments. There's actually, there was some song that really stuck out to me. It was Fine Time in the last episode. Like, everybody's like on like Kate Bush about all this, uh, whatever, running up hills yeah, and running up hills. Yeah. You know, but, uh, this song fine time by free beer that's a really that was a really good song but i enjoyed it i was like underrated i looked it up couldn't find it on spotify and i looked it up on youtube and it has a thousand like 1000.7 views 
which is sad because I'm like, well, our ninety percent of the comments are like Stranger Things brought me here. Well, you see, uh, comments were turned off on the video. So oh, I don't even know, dude. Nice. So, yeah, that's how you know. So they like, were a, like an right. actual true experience of a new. Yeah, exactly. Song, you don't yeah. get. Yeah, you don't get that annoying, whatever. Yeah, but okay. Ladies and gentlemen, we have song recommendations, we have theme park recommendations, we have mini bowling recommendations and video game recommendations. I think now it is time that we talk about hero clicks. So let's dial H. No, 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 no. no news. Simi, we got some news. The, um, let's start off with some fun news. We got the WizKids World tier. It's about 36 seconds, which if you pause at 26 seconds, you can see uh, my cowboy hat and then Simeon Nald or sorry, you can see Nalder Kess's cowboy hat and Cal- Calderness's cowboy hat at the same frame. Is that true? Uh, Are we? See our hat? Yeah. Oh. Yeah, it's it's a uh, world's team sealed is what I think most wow. of this footage is taken from. Okay. Um, I, I actually, so yeah. I've watched this video twice and I did not notice this, but. Yeah, I had to slow it down and be like, okay, I could see my hat in the background like a handful of times, right? There's actually a time where I'm like, I think punching you or something at like four or five seconds in. <laughs> I'm like making this big hand motion in the top left side of the screen. I'm like, Hoo! and I'm like, what am I doing? What is it? What is happening? Throwing a booster at somebody, punching Simeon. I don't know. The rest of it is just like at tables and stuff, which is cool. Um, but yeah. That's really neat. So WizKids is doing some on the road to worlds and they yeah. have a little, uh, you know, this is what we can expect. Here are some highlights from 2019. Yeah. So Basically, a, they're going to have 2019 highlights reel. Um, right. Heavily, heavily using uh, a Mr. Aries Edge voice. Yeah. Uh, dishing up clicks fame. And uh, at the end of the video, it says, uh, check out this website because in the following week. So the week after you hear this, probably within a couple days after you hear this, um, yeah, a little bit. It'll be like Monday, Tuesday, who knows? But it'll be the week technically after this episode drops. Uh, you'll see an updated whizkids.com slash worlds2022 um, website page. And so currently on the website page, they have 2022 worlds or WizKids Worlds Championships, September 15th through the 18th, Graceland Exhibition Center, Memphis, Tennessee, 38116. Uh, the Guest House at Graceland. Uh, that's all stuff that we kind of already knew before this point. Welcome to the 2022 WizKids Worlds Championship. WizKids is pleased to announce this year's World Championship will t- be taking place at the Graceland Exhibition Center. Prepare to battle it out for the title of World Champion of he- four hero clicks or dice masters with Ooh. plenty of side events and tourist opportunities. It's going to be an amazing weekend. So they don't mention good old uh, attack wing, but they do say compete in amazing games, hero clicks and dice masters. So announcements and facts to be announced room block and tour package to be announced tournament and resources to be announced world championship qualifier to be announced world championship to be announced side events to be announced exclusives for sale to be announced event schedule to be announced so obviously none of it's been updated it's it's going to be updated next week hopefully right, yeah in full but yeah they're almost there they're almost complete uh there were comments online saying that the room block is purchased and like so there is a Heroclix specific room block at Graceland that is booked, is completely like covered. So if you are planning on staying at Graceland, there will be plenty of rooms available for that. You don't have to worry about potentially getting like an Airbnb or a different hotel or whatever. Um, I personally highly suggest you stay at Graceland because not only does it come with a opportunity for uh, convention exclusives for like a small upcharge. Right. The rooms are great. The like accommodations are great. There's a restaurant in there. There's like free food at like on certain nights and stuff. There's great stuff. And then there's like hero clicks people that just like hang out in the lobby all night. I, there's going to be a lot of like named people that are hanging out at Graceland 
and it's like a five minute walk to the venue. So yeah, so convenient. Um, I don't think they did have a ten dollar parking pass or something like that, or maybe there wasn't. I don't remember. But um, I will say I have been kicking myself not staying at Graceland because of that uh, that peanut butter sandwich bar that they yeah. had. That I, I didn't that I missed participate out on. in that, but. Um, there was a night where Sean and Char- oh, I, think I think Sean oh, I think and Charles were both downstairs, but there was like a ton of people, a ton of clicks people, because like obviously there's some older folks that are there for Graceland specifically, and, right? And, yeah. Uh, then there's some HeroClix folks that are there for HeroClix specifically, but there was like this middle section of the lobby that was just like extremely drunk hero clicks players and oh my god i only tangentially hilarious. like talked to them because they were all like way too out of it and i was like oh, all man. right well i'm going up to my room now you all have a lot of fun also go up to your with room your before empty cases of beer that you just bought but um Thanks. no it Thanks. was it was really fun it was really funny uh talking strategy and seeing people like hanging out in like the breakfast bar and stuff oh, nice. like going over stuff really cool like tons of like hero clicks maps set up on tables like breakfast tables oh, or that. lobby that tables so or whatever just really fun really funny uh and yeah just having it was like the most weirdly casual but at the same time extremely competitive community at the same time like it's right. it's great because it's like super casual setting. You're not act- actively playing, but everyone's like too drunk to be like, oh, I can't show you my secret. They're like, well, let me show you my secret. So on this map, I actually take this corner, like, you know, whatever stuff like that. Yeah. It was pretty funny. Um, there is a restaurant in the hotel. And then, yeah, there there's like, I don't know, plenty of accommodations. I enjoyed the hotel stay. Uh, it was a five minute walk or so to the convention center and I tend to sleep in. So it was good for me because I otherwise would not have shown up on time, but oh my uh, gosh. yeah, we'll next week, most likely because they have said more next week, discuss. they'll, they'll have, have way more information, uh, yeah, the yeah. announcements, FAQ, the frequently asked questions, uh, room block and tour package, tournament resources world championship qualifier world championship side events exclusives for sale and event schedule so we'll have plenty more to discuss next week when we get all of that stuff determined but yeah as of now it looks like hero clicks and dice masters if you have any dice master friends crazy but uh oh, tell them that certainly don't <laughs> the the world tournament's going on i have like three and it is oh hey there you go crazy that they they're still playing it to me i'm like you want to come back to hero clicks and they're like no i prefer my dice and i'm like why? Why? there's dice here too hey bro there's dice and cards yeah, and stuff here too yeah they're like no i like my cards with pictures and my dice with images and no sculpts and i'm like i like sculpts with dice with no images and cards with i mean kind of an image but like who cares and yeah kind of Image of, the and, uh, Image of the comic book on yeah, there. Them, them Dice Ooh. Masters people, they're real like, what kind of art? And I guess I can't fault them too much because I really like the tarot cards. But that's Memphis, Tennessee, right. September 15th Memphis, through the 18th. We'll Big, be uh, there. Dial H is oh, yeah, be will. there. Yeah. We'll be able to dial H for all sorts of stuff. Dial H yeah. for a helping hand. Just don't Every dial H <laughs> on the guest house phone line because you will not right. get us. You will get nope. uh, someone else. Probably, I don't know who. Probably fine. Uh, I will say big shout out to Ken with two N's. There's also more Calder in Texas. I don't know exactly what this comment means. At least he means more me. <laughs> oh, I will on the say, WizKid video? For on the WizKid video. I yeah. saw that. More Calder and Texas. Well, I, I Calder's not from Texas. Nope, not <laughs> I think from he there. just likes uh, more cowboy hats. He's like, more Calder, and then I guess after Calder, anything else from Texas. Anything Texas related. Yeah, great Ford comment. trucks. Ribs, I don't know. Cowboy uh, hats, guns, really something. long commutes. Like you got like really, ninety yeah. mile an hour highways because really long they roads. Pretty insane. Second um, biggest state yeah. in the union. Order Mexico. That'd be awesome. Anyways, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, some hero clicks to talk about, which 
is new. It's new and exciting. Simeon, we got to see the legacy card for my, for my boy, my boy Forge, and oh, I'm yeah. I'm super pumped actually. Uh, sadly, it's not the Forge I wanted it to be. I really wanted the Wolverine and the X Men rare yeah. unique Forge to this be legacy. Sinister set Forge. Yeah, Sinister set Forge. I don't I don't know. I don't own this Forge. It was a bummer. But he's going to forty five points, which is pretty cool. Uh, he's gonna he's gonna grab two traits because obviously this is before cards and stuff. But he's got running shot, energy explosion, outwit, top dial, with an eight speed, nine attack, sixteen defense, and three damage with eight range. Mystical sword, scientist, X Factor, and X Men. Um, so already his stats do leave a lot to be desired. He does have a seven attack in his dial. He's got quite a few eights. Ever goes above a nine attack, so they they have some traits to help him out with that. So. Free, choose an object in Forge's square or an adjacent square. If you do, remove it from the game and give him a Tinker token. Now, it's just any any object, so I think he could, like, it doesn't even say standard object. I think you could walk up to someone's equipment and be like... I believe so, yeah. Tinker token, thank you, which is really yeah. cool, so I like that. An um, object, it just says an object. So an it object, say special dude. or standard. An object, it's so special very... included. Uh, in yeah, his square or adjacent square if you do remove it from the game. Yeah. yeah he, him, and he's, he's not the first he's character that can do something like that, but he is the first, like, 45-point character that can do something like yeah. that. Yeah. Yeah, he's not, like, collector or whatever. Like, he's he's kind of cheap. It's pretty cool. Uh, seven clicks of life, too, so don't don't be like, ah, oh, 16 defense with nothing. It's like, well, seven cl- above average. So what do the Tinker Tokens do? Uh, not my best work. Free, remove a Tinker token and choose a combat value except damage uh, on Forge or an adjacent friendly character. If you do until their next turn or your next turn, the chosen character modifies that combat value plus two. So you can give him uh, a sweet, sweet 11 attack top dial, which is much better than his nine attack. Um, so you can do it to help out Forge's combat values. You know, give him an 18 defense instead of a 16 or 10 range. Sometimes in the dial, it gets uh, goes down to a 14. Or yeah, just don't even have to worry about defense if you so far away he'll have, have like a running shot 10 range 14 square reach yeah uh it's pretty awesome so i don't know this forge is really fun i don't think he's he's not meta he's not crazy competitive no. you know he he does roll on he's got outwit but he rolls on to some perplex and some support and some leadership you know he's always got a little helping hand power he's got some willpower some smoke cloud force blast that one click that don't sleep on that click four that eight attack with pen sai bump I that up say... to a 10 and you might hit it for two damage oh baby Depending on how he plus the new Professor X is worded. Um, let me see if I can pull up the wording for Professor X real quick. Uh, okay. Let's see. <clears throat> but yeah. Like, so it's he pretty can, awesome. He but... can rem- uh, choose to, an object in a Forge's square or an adjacent square. If you do remove it from the game, give him a Tinker token. Removing an object from the game counts as KOing it in most circumstances. So... For Professor X, this is the chase from X-Men, X of Swords, um, forging the Cerebro Sword once per game when an opposing equipment would be KO'd. So if you'd use this forge, you like TK him up and then do that to an opposing object, I believe it would be considered as KO'd. And then you may instead equip it to a friendly character. If you do, that character can use Blade Slash Fangs this game. So... There's an interesting re- interaction with that. Uh, this forge was originally 84 points, so almost cut. Oh wow, points wise. Yeah, that's pretty which, good. When you look at his dial, makes a lot of sense. Like a 16 yeah. nothing that goes to really low values with toughness and willpower um, makes sense. You're like, but, how is this ever worth 84 <laughs> points? Goodness, yeah. Uh, a different. Yeah. Point. It makes a lot more sense, like that. Like he's got these two traits now. Um, we are waiting on like the two by two apocalypse, the Magneto, the Legacy Magneto. Um, so there's a few Legacy figures that we're waiting on, but so far the set's pretty much spoiled. So we're only waiting yeah. on, uh, let's see, a handful of chases, and then we are still waiting on the last Super Rare Prime that is. Jim Jaspers? What is it? Mad Jim Jaspers. Mad, yeah, super Mad, Mad, Mad Jim, Jim Jaspers is the last thing that we're super technically waiting, for, waiting on. So the Super Rare Prime that we have seen, of course, Here we go. is Nimrod. So 
We've seen Nimrod. Dude's yeah. 125 points. Dude's a super prime. Cosmic energy. He giant. He flies. He's got six range. Future robot sentinel. Of targeting destroys blocking terrain and ignores characters, which is pretty cool. Uh, he has recruiter, like good read recruiter, but it's for the sentinel keyword. So, chosen character the sentinel keyword in your KO area that hasn't been chosen or generated by a recruiter effect. If you do generate a character with the sentinel keyword from your sideline that has a lower point value than the chosen character, this game the generated character can't be replaced and your opponent scores immediately instead of when they're KO'd. I think this would be really fun to bring in like master mold. Or something, you know, like 25 oh, points. Or absolutely. Master Mold on the 25 point line. Any of the Sentinels on right? the 25 point line. Um, like, because they'll, the, they'll share fun. the share the robot keyword, and then you can also do Karima for like the for like your main force uh, going robot to Sentinel. So, oh sure, there you go. There's a lot of yeah. options when it comes to that. Um, but yeah, he's. It's a cool sculpt. We've seen the regular super rare of uh, right. Nimrod. Nimrod the Lesser. Yeah, this is Nimrod, Nimrod the, the Morer. This is the Normer. Normal. Normer. Normaler. Nimrod. Nimrod. Uh, but yeah, he's he's yeah. interesting. He's a solid little. Uh, in my opinion, oh, he's dear. a solid, like little one man army kind of style thing. If you're building around yeah. his keywords. I don't think so, he works without his keywords, but specifically yeah. around his keywords, he definitely works in my opinion. Really like big interesting thing about him is his like special attack power that he has. So he's a very pulse wave centered guy. He's got eight clicks of life. He's got pulse wave on all of them. Normal pulse wave on the last two. Special on the first six. So it's disintegration beam. Pulse wave. Nimrod uses it, you may instead only target characters within range along a single direct line of fire. Instead of like making it an AOE effect within all halved range, use a single line of fire, you know, diagonal, straightforward, whatever, um, and target that character. If you do, hit characters are dealt two damage instead of one. So that's if you AOE it, right? AOE it along a single line, they're all dealt two damage, which is already better than all pulse wave. Yeah. Because it'd be normally now, if only, one within three. One. Or if you can one do a direct three. line, it'd be two within three. Yep. But well, you can still get three people. He's yeah. a giant, and then also it's Pulse Wave. So he'll have, like, a lot of fire and secrets, which is really cool. Um, but if only one character is targeted, and it was an opposing character, so you can't single target, obviously, Pulse Wave yourself. You're not allowed to do that. Um, he deals his printed value instead. So he gets normal Pulse Wave if he targets a single opposing character. So that's that's a four damage Pulse Wave. Or a three kind damage of interesting. at 35 points. Or, with, yeah, for 35 points, shot. three damage. Because it's not a special like power action. Oh, it's not the power. So you do get to combine this with his running shot for so for thirty five points. If you can single target pulse wave ten for three. It's not great, but you can perplex up your own attack. You, you cannot perplex, perplex yeah. down their defense, but like you can perplex up his own attack and uh, or range. I guess like any of those kind of things. It is a it, I don't know. It's a cool throwback to a power it, that we used really, to know and love. He does it kind of begs with... that question, though. Like, is this, you know, like, this is, like, not the return of Pulse Wave, or it's kind of a return of a full damage Pulse Wave, right? Is it worth it? You is know it what I mean? Like a 35-point prime slot? Or is, yeah, a 125-point prime, slot, point prime me, slot? You know, if um, you want a four-damage Pulse Wave someone, yeah, like... I feel like it, on Sentinel it. and Robot, it is. Like, okay. Robot, Robot has a really good prime already, but... um I feel like if you're playing Sentinel specifically or if you're building around Nimrod specifically, uh, I would personally never play this guy at 35 points. He is a three-click long stop click at 35 points with that special right. running shot pulse wave and perplex. So it's not like he's bad at 35 points. But if I'm playing him at anything in on theme, I'm pl probably playing him at 125 so I can single target somebody for four because that just... Right like deletes uh well no it doesn't delete like a black heart but that like that deletes like a few like people like flash uh multiple flashes you do two damage uh that kind of thing like it gets rid of like a lot of problemary characters that would normally face off against you um and then you still have the ability to like single target for 
the majority of his dial, the everything yeah. of his dial except the last two clicks, you can do the single target pulse wave for at minimum three damage, which is still yeah. good for something. So it's but again, that's that's my worry with this guy is not necessarily a worry. Like he's really good, and I think in casual he's going to be like super strong and great. But I don't think he's quite into the competitive scene. You know, like, man, this is like a really good power, obviously. And maybe I'm missing something that other people are seeing. I'm not. If so, let me know. Or if you don't want to tell me your, your gameplay secrets and whatever, keep it to yourself. I don't care. But, um, like, seriously, I, I want this guy to be, like, super competitive or whatever. But I'm just, like, thinking it'd be great to, like, four damage pulse wave, like, Thanos and ignore everything. You know, like, that's really cool. Does that matter so much if he's going to heal two clicks or three clicks next turn? And then again, this dude's It'd reach also be almost is like impossible um, with him. Yeah, uh, yeah, to pull that off, you know. And like this dude's reach is, you know, it's uh three, it's, it's eight squares with a pulse wave, you know, at at top dial. It's not crazy, you know. And then it's fourteen squares with a with a TK. Again, still not crazy. Um, I still think he, well. He's he's got a couple things going for him. He's got silver for one. Uh, oh yeah, he has true. Any future X sets that might have sentinels, um, and then yeah, I feel like for casual, he he's not quite like a boss level character, but at 125 points, what he can do if you combine him with the new master mold, that is definitely a boss yeah. sit, like situation. 375 plus 125, so you have. 500 points of Master Mold and Nimrod. And that's like a scary situation yeah. that like you have to try and overtake kind of situation. And, like whatever. You know, he is obviously he's giant. So he could be pulse waving like every turn if you're lucky. Oh, he awesome. should be. I mean, you know? if two out of three turns you don't hit a three through six, then you're just very unlucky, which I have seen yeah. that. But yeah, it happens. It happens yeah. to the best of us. And then as far as like I do, recruiter tree, I do like, well, you've got the X-Men Rise and Fall Sentinels that aren't great, but no, like you do have no. those for 25 points. You have the uh, the Legacy card or the X-Men Dark Phoenix Saga Sentinels for 25 points. Uh, you have Dr. Alia Gregor for 20 points, which can help uh, Master Rude. Mold quite a bit. You have Karima at 75 points who can use the robot theme team team up to make robots sentinel keyword um you have a lot of sentinel stuff in the last couple years so mostly like the 2019 set x-men dark phoenix saga but you know you play bastion or bastion and <laughs> you have a leadership bastion that bastion. uh yeah True. Makes that a gives sentinel. you a lot of sentinels yeah and uh, uh that's I, a really fun say, casual team i will say like super fun I think they aced a of this version of Nimrod, like a comic accurate version of Nimrod that's like also like simple, that feels like Nimrod. He feels powerful. He's rocking the 19 invincible top dial, which is really cool. Yeah. Yeah, special pulse wave. Like he feels you know, like the Days of Future Past one was like a super high point costed, like three hundred something point whatever figure, right? And the chase I, from Days Personally, of Future Past. I think this Nimrod takes that one down in a one yeah. one. Um and so? because See what was the the original Nimrod? Well, not the original one. Sorry, uh, the one from X Men Dark. Right, we're, we're not going back that far. Future Past, because yeah, we're not going to Fantastic. He Forces. was. He was three fifty. Yikes! Oh my gosh. Yeah, or he was three fifty. He was three fifty, yeah. and then the highest point for the Dark Phoenix Saga one was three seventy five. So. That one's like defense values weren't great. Wasn't protected outwit or anything no. like that. Uh, the new one, um, he's still a 12 for 4, which is what the 375.1 from only two years ago, three years ago, was. Yeah, and true. the Days of Future Past one was a 12 for 5 at 350. And that was, man, how many years ago? Days of Future Past, that was... 2014? Uh, yeah. 15? The minute. 2014. The minute. Yeah, so... So he's definitely gotten a little bit better um, point cost wise. He might not be like the same attack power level, but like his stats are basically the same as like these previous 300 point level ones. So I definitely think that he's worth it. Plus the like the right. Sentinel recruiter team ability thing, the whole recruition 
recruition uh, ability doesn't necessarily keep him in the game, but it keeps your team in the game. So you have some like lower point Sentinels, you have like some uh, whatever thirty five point ones, hundred point ones, whatever, and then when they die, you just power action bring in one of the twenty five point ones, bring in one of the fifty point yeah. ones, whatever. Uh, you know what a great Sentinel to bring in at fifty points is. Okay. Cyclops Sentinel. We have That's it. A oh yeah, Cyclops would be really good. That is a good pick. Yeah, suddenly having a Cyclops Sentinel on the board is pretty solid. Um, he's an eleven for four with Psychic Blast and eight range and nine square or nine speed for running shot. So he's a thirteen square reach, eleven for four, all on his own. And you can just bring that in if a different Sentinel dies. So yeah, and then he potentially nice. drops his Cyclops head. A little cyclops, yeah. Idiot. Um, uh, all right, let's go ahead and I say move on. This is pretty fun news. Sets coming. Yeah, it's, uh, looking like August ish, early August. Ready for the main that. set. Full yeah. breakdown. Whatever we. Call oh baby, those. that's gonna be a long, be a long episode. Oh no, um, that's gonna be fun. It's a massive set review or towards. Let's go ahead and jump into some listener questions. There are dozens of us. So we're going to kick it off here with Malcolm. Malcolm, this is the uh, third week. You're going through defense powers now. Malcolm asked us to choose a character that we think represents its power, or not each defense, sorry, each standard power in the game, and then a f- character, a figure on the game of Hero Clicks to go along with that power slash character we chose. So defense powers uh, begin. First up is Super Senses, and I this is a this is an easy one. There's like two people you can basically choose, I think, and it's like Spider Man or Wonder Woman, and I chose Spider Man yeah. for Super Senses. Uh, I would. I did choose personally never choose Wonder Woman, even though her team ability is like yeah. Super Senses. That's like the whole point of her team ability. I do not think of Wonder Woman as being a Super Senses kind of person. Oh, there's like I don't really either. There's a lot of like Justice League members I could be like, oh yeah, like Super Senses. But personally, that's that's a web crawler, uh, a Spidey, it's a web crawl, Spidey, Spidey boy Spidey. kind of thing. Um, so yeah. So I went with the Civil War zero thirteen Spider Man, anti registration Spider Man, mostly because um really quickly he when he uses Super Senses. Uh, if he hit with a close combat attack during this turn, he can use sidestep this turn and automatically breaks away when doing so. It's just kind of fun. It's traded super senses, but it's kind of that whole bouncing back Spider-Man. I think I've went off on the show before about saying like this is probably my favorite, most like thematic. Sp- not great. It's not really good, but it's very thematic Spider-Man to me. And you know, traded super senses. So yeah, bada bing, bada boom. Simeon, who'd you choose for super senses? Defense powers are hard because. A lot of characters could go through like the whole gamut of defense powers in like their own dial or close yeah. to a lot of them. Uh, so yeah, I also went with Spider Man. Personally, nice. Super Senses. It's it's literally called Spider Senses. I don't know how you could pick anyone other than Spider Man. I went with the Captain America and the Avengers Super Rare. Oh, here you go. Yeah, the old PS4 Spidey Superman oh. that has the two different dials. So he has traded Super Senses. It's called Spider Sense, Super Senses, but succeeds on the 4 through 6, protected at wit. Uh, he goes between a uh, uh, shape change toughness dial and a combat reflexes and uh, outwit perplex combat expert exploit weakness dial. Uh, so. He's got like a more attack kind of dial, and then one dial is like a sidestep stealth double rollout dial. But obviously, if you've been playing since Captain America and the Avengers, you've probably seen this guy. He's a really solid 85 point beast. He's really cool. I hope they change the Spider Man team ability to be like the Wonder Woman team ability because then he is extremely good because he's already got a 50 50 rollout. Having a whatever. Three through six rollout would be even better. Yeah. Uh, next up is toughness. This is the character I first thought of toughness, specifically because of their hero clicks figure. I couldn't think of anyone else. Uh, but it's the Deadpool set Grasshopper. He has uh, just a sixteen toughness top dial. I think it's called 
grasshopper suit or something like dumb is like what his toughness name is but yeah. for some reason he is just the first person that came to mind when i thought of toughness maybe because i'm like wow that big special suit gives you toughness and then you know there's, say... there's like johnny blaze johnny blaze also has toughness and what's his toughness a leather jacket so it's like well your suit is <laughs> as good as a leather jacket grasshopper so good job so yeah that's i will say that's toughness my might be the toughest power to pick for hey, oh, um, yeah, got him. no it, it like really is because you've no, got characters that are i don't even know you've got characters that are like 100 points or 300 points like there's a 300 point magneto that has three clicks of toughness at the end of his dial it's like sure. what do i what do i consider somebody that exemplifies toughness so i went with a like one of my lower end goon kind of characters. I went with the Spider Man Venom Absolute Carnage set Hammerhead. So he has two dials, but I went with the lower point one. It doesn't really matter. He has toughness either way. Um, but yeah, on his lower dial, his 30 point dial, he starts with toughness. And uh, yeah, he's just. He's a dude in a suit. He's just a Magia goon enforcer. He's just a go. mob guy. And he's not particularly tough, other than he's got that big old head that can apparently like take concrete to it or something. You know, he's he can right. bulldoze with his forehead. If only there was a character that was a bulldozer, but no, we've got Hammerhead who can also do the same thing. Uh, all right. Uh, next up is Defend. I think it's probably because like it's a recency bias, or I've like never cared about the power defend until very, very recently. But yeah, Captain Carter was the oh, first person sure. to go into my head when I thought of defend. So I have the normal super rare. I think the prime is actually worse at defending than this one is. This one has the traded defend, which is just better. Yeah, the prime and then is non-adjacent characters within range get you know modified just defense. Cheaper. Yeah, yeah, she is cheaper, but. Yeah, so I uh, I went with old old Captain Carter, super rare. That was my defend pick. That's a good choice. I mean, so when I thought of defend, I was thinking like defenders at first, and then I was like, well, Doctor Strange doesn't normally defend. Like he's not like just he's yeah, more I was like kind of there too. I was opinion. thinking like maybe shifting Doctor Strange, like the defend shifting Strange. Yeah. I guess was like a, a pick, but I was like, no. So I was trying to think of somebody that like is always shielding defending whatever their friendly characters like the in comics and so the only one that i could think of that has defend on their dial in hero clicks almost always is invisible woman so her whole thing is invisible barriers and making herself invisible obviously in like the more recent comics she doesn't do the invisible thing as much as like the clear barriers she's basically a green lantern of mcu kind of stuff um but I went with the Cosmic Clash Invisible Woman, who at a hundred point okay. line has uh, a stop click, but only if another friendly character with the Fantastic Four keyword is on the map, and then shape change because it's on the damage slot, and then Ooh. has starting toughness barrier willpower. When Invisible Woman uses barrier after resolutions, you may knock back two squares, any number of opposing characters adjacent to these markers, and then. Every click without that special defense power is defend. So she has a 19 defend. Oh, there you go. And then at the end of her dial, she has two clicks of 18 defend. Uh, but yeah, it's just a solid defense piece. Um, even if she's not using defend in its classical way, she's using barrier. She's using willpower. She's keeping people from hitting your opposing or your your friendly characters with like her knockback and stuff. But uh that was, that was the best defend I could think okay. of. Obviously, there's some more interesting defend pieces with, like, uh, Jane Foster and stuff like that, but, yeah. Oh, sure, right. The Healy defend. Yeah, uh, next low defense for support. Combat reflexes here. So, as soon as it was, like, combat reflexes, I was like, oh, Iron Fist. That's my dude. Combat reflexes, absolutely. Uh, I had to find a version of him that had it. Well, I wanted to choose this one. The one from Secret Invasion slash Classics, because Classics is the, the little mini set that I actually got him in. But it's the same dial. Uh, he doesn't have any special combo reflexes or anything like that. He just picks it up like three clicks in the middle of his dial. Um, But yeah, man, Iron Fist. First person I thought of, and I was like, yeah, dude. Yeah, 
when I think of combat reflexes, I think of uh, martial art type yeah, people, yeah. High martial art kind of people. Obviously, like Spider Man could have combat reflexes, it would make sense, but I went with Shang Chi. So the Deadpool rare, the non prime, uh, first Deadpool set. So he has combat reflexes his whole dial. Obviously, I did the best Shang Chi of all time video. So right. you can check out my deep dive that's over two seconds long for this shang chi uh but he's a really good figure for a rare they really like they made some pretty solid figures in that deadpool set and uh, there's not a few there's only a few of them that i'd be like disappointed pulling um but yeah i he's literally the dude that you know it's like single-handedly taking down some like criminal organizations obviously iron fist took down a helicarrier with one punch Ooh. But, uh, no, as far as combat reflexes go, it's like the master of all martial artists. So, okay. who's going gotcha, to gotcha, punch gotcha. him? Who? Who? Fair enough. I guess Fair somebody enough. maybe with, like, a 12 attack might hit him. But other than that, who? Yeah. Who? Uh, next up is energy shield deflection. I, to no one's surprise, uh, went with Captain America. Typically, oh. I did go with the battlegrounds uh avengers masters of evil set captain america the 50.1 so he does have a special defense power called the shield which gives him esd and toughness with a unique modifier which is a decent friendly character's modified defense by you plus one so it's kind of how he's shielding other people i really dig it um caps with esd go back to the dawn of time uh but this one i just enjoy the most i love this little 50 point uh starter set cap Evil starter, very thematic. But yes. yeah, who is yes, your uh, ESD pick? Better oh, yeah? than ESD yeah. toughness. What? What, Simi? What? ESD and vulnerability. Oh, okay. All yeah, right. Yeah yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I went with the JLU rare Green Lanterns, the John Stewart, for seventy-five Disgusting. points. Disgusting. Three clicks of ESD and vulnerability. Um, when Green Lantern hits after resolutions, give each hit character that is equipped an action token and the Justice Lord's team ability. Uh, or not team ability, but trait. Wow, Justice evil Lord. Green Lantern, and he's Justice not even the best Lord's Green Lantern. Trait. Yeah. Yeah. He ends up with charge blades and empower. What? But uh, no, a Green Lantern, that's the first thing I think of ESD. I think of big old lantern balls, big old lantern shields. That kind Don't of say lantern balls ever again. Yeah, please. they make big old balls around oh, themselves. Nah, that's enough of that. Yeah, they that's encapsulate enough of that. themselves uh, like a, a amiibos or something. Um, but no, yes. like the John Stewart from Batman animated series is actually one that I think of before this specific one. But that one actually doesn't have ESD top dial. This one does. Oh, so I mean, any Green Lantern from JLU technically. Oh, well, I guess other than this one, most of the Green Lanterns from JLU can, uh, or no, I guess it'd be Wonder Woman 80. Any of the Green Lanterns from Wonder Woman 80 <laughs> there can you technically go. get, um, also get ESD. ESD from the boxing Good job, gloves. Jimmy, and you did or it. not you boxing gloves. Uh, catcher's, catcher's mitt. mitt. Catcher's mitt. You did it. Jeez. Good job, Simeon. Took us a while. Uh, but yeah, the catcher's it. mitt can technically hand that out. But, yeah, I always thought of Green Lanterns as being, like, really protected from range. Obviously, Jon Stewart more than most because he is a nightmare from range. If you've ever read the comics, you know, he makes big old lantern sniper constructs to kill people from, like, light years away. And uh, that's scary. But, yeah. Uh, All right. Next up is Barrier. I instantly think of Scarlet Witch when I think Barrier. Uh, Probably Uh, because, number one, the like the cheapest forms of barrier with her with her keywords so i do realize that she typically rolls onto it later on dial like war of the realms rolls onto it later my favorite scarlet witch the avengers set scarlet witch for 35 points the first ever card it's set rolls onto it on her second click uh but we're gonna have to shout out probably the most played competitive scarlet witch i guess probably still more played than the chase one i i would say at the time the chaos war fast forces scarlet witch was just a a beast when you look at her for 50 points now you're like ew gross why would you pay 50 points or something like that but uh back in the day barrier top dial barrier with perplex and probability control for 50 points 
was absolutely awesome. Plus, she had the Mystics team ability. Plus, she could pen blast someone six squares away, nine for two. But yeah, Barrier, Scarlet Witch, to me, they just go hand in hand. Simeon, who you got for Barrier, bro? Oh, I I can't believe Calder forgot this character because... Oh, God, I already know who it's going to be. Dang, it's the purple guy. Best Barrier piece right? ever created. Uh, Forget uh, about Kamala Khan from Netflix... Or not Netflix. Sorry. Forget about Kamala Khan from Disney Plus with her special fisty powers made out of glowy glow dust. Uh, the original Bunker from the Teen Titans set Bunker. who could Gosh. create Bunker fists and purple dust mitts. And uh, yeah, no, he uh, his big thing was he could do barrier and toughness and then he could also do smoke cloud kind of things. But... Uh, I, I did not remove the type could, of terrain until he used a different type of terrain. So he could barrier, right. and then you just it was just rinse and repeat. You just barriered, you left it until your opposing characters destroyed it. That barrier was in place, and uh, I believe we played him after the Wonder Woman eighty re- like rules change. So uh, I didn't did even have to worry about the fact that he wasn't in Dom. He had you know right. no pushing damage. Uh, maybe um, I. That was one game that I, we had to play twice. Uh, it really sucks that we had to play that game twice because number one, it was Teen Titans already. <laughs> yeah. Number two, Bunker was a pain in the butt to play against. He yeah. was awful. Oh, my God. One of the few super rares I'd love to have Ugh. two of if it wasn't for the fact that I'm pretty sure he's a unique. All right. Also, I think one of the only characters that has printed barrier on an attack power. Like he has barrier, uh, has a yeah. special attack power, barrier incapacitate, barrier wake. Incapacitate, so yeah. there is no point on a dial where he does not have barrier. Um, he has smoke cloud, force blast, top dial for his first three clicks, and then also barrier as his defense power with toughness. And then yeah, if you don't want to keep your smoke, you can just keep your barrier. And uh, that barrier, bro. To be fair, it's a cool sculpt. It's got like cool purple glowy effects. He's basically yeah, it is, but like Lantern. I hate bunker, so we're moving on. <laughs> Anyways, uh, next up is the mastermind power. Uh, when I think mastermind, I think two people. I think Professor X and I think Lex Luthor. That's nothing against bald people. They just seem to always have mastermind for whatever reason. Professor X, you should be a a better person if you so have might mastermind. Be the first character um, that we have picked the same character. The which, same. Which, which one think? did you go with? Yeah. You think I chose Professor X? Or you think I chose Lex Luthor? Uh, I'm going Lex. I did choose Lex Luthor. Yep, you're right. Okay. Um, okay. I did choose, however, Harley Quinn and the Gotham Girls, zero sixty six. Oh, Lex the Luthor, chase. God of Apocalypse. God of Apocalypse. Yeah. Apocalypse. Okay. Who has uh, Invincible Mastermind as a special that is a def- great, power top dial? Great casual one man army. Like, oh, dude, I love this figure. If you're so not much. expecting it. It is hard to beat. And people will be like, oh, I could beat that. I run Sinister Six all the time. Or, like, I run Secret Six. Or I run, you know, Commissioner with the Lantern Battery. Ah, whatever. It's easy to beat if you, like, build to beat it. But uh, that's a rough figure to beat. If you're just, if you just build, like, the Runaways or, like, a casual oh, yeah. team. Yeah. Man, is that he, a rough I will figure. say, like... Sadly, he's gotten worse because his, like, Omega judgment is running shot. And when he uses it and hits, he can use telekinesis at no cost to target yeah. a hit character. <laughs> so, doesn't do anything. Um, Does not do Yeah, it's really it's Plus, really he's rough. got some DC defense stats that just dip real low. I mean, he's got an 18. I mean, for 250 points, he should definitely start with a 19. But, yeah, that 18 defense is a little rough. But Mastermind... Uh, okay, what Lex Luthor did you choose? Mastermind here. I went with probably, I don't know. Wait, let me guess. Let me get President Lex Luthor from Batman the Animated Series. No. Oh, uh, dang. All right. Go uh, I went with probably the best designed Lex Luthor by anybody under the age of 15 when they designed him. Uh, that would be Red oh, Sun Lex Luthor. Yeah, okay. From yeah, the Wonder he's... Woman 80th set. Uh, of course. This is the Isaac Arnold Berkowitz Championship Lex Luthor with the red sun dial on the base. Uh, so he's the one that he has printed Mastermind on his first click. 
but then he has stop mastermind three more times. So he gets when a bystander generated by Lex Luthor is KO'd after resolutions deal him one unavoidable damage. He has a special speed power that is on only one click. When this click is first revealed after resolutions, generate a bizarro bystander that has immune until your next turn. He has a special attack click that is only on one click. Uh, when this click is first revealed after resolutions, generate a green light bystander that has immune until your next click. So if you KO, if he generates the bizarro and you KO the bizarro, he takes one unavoidable and he generates the green light. And then you can't gener- you can't kill the green light or him the same turn. So green light gets one turn. Same with bizarro. Bizarro gets one turn because they're immune. Um, and then if you KO the Bizarro and you KO the uh, Green Lantern, he lands on Outwit. When this click is first revealed, choose an opposing character. For the rest of the game, that character can't attack Lex Luthor unless they are the only character on their force. And he still has Stop Mastermind. So, the guy. Oh, it's I a do great, love that Lex Luthor. Great figure. Like, I, I'll for be, 50 points, like, it's awesome. Best thing is, like, and why he is actually kind of like the Mastermind Goat. That he can mastermind to the pogs when they're, uh, you know, when they're immune, immune yeah. and then it's like doesn't do anything. And he can pulse wave, like the he can be pulse wave new mastermind to those guys because it's stop mastermind. Yeah, the, you know, it yeah, is stop gives him protected pulse wave, protected yep. outwit, and then he has he's, mastermind he's and goated, immune dude. gives it protected pulse wave, protected outwit. So yeah, also <laughs> protected. So yeah, you cannot kill this pog. You cannot kill Lex. <laughs> Once that pog There's is like that turn, zero chance generate. of you ever double awesome. tapping, or I guess in his case with the stops, you do normally have to like triple tap him or something. Tap the only way you could do it like is Luther. like Green Lantern or or not Green Lantern, Green Arrow or um, Muramasa Blade or like Fulcum, where they just ignore oh, sure. like defense More powers stop, and you just blow through. through his defense powers. To be fair, is it when this click is revealed? Because then they're the th- figure's still going to get made. It is if he doesn't have stop defense, mastermind, mastermind when a bystander generated by Lex is KO'd after resolution. Oh, I meant his, one. his like speed and his attack power. Oh no, you st- you'd still generate the figures. Because right, you still get it. But you just uh, when this click is first revealed after resolution, okay, yeah. generate the so first revealed. Yeah, he would yeah. Get it. So you'd still get the yep. bystanders, but you could one shot Lex. Uh, all right. Next up is willpower. Willpower is a interesting power uh obviously we used to be able to roll for it now you can still roll for it uh funny joke haha funny um <laughs> when well, i think of willpower, willpower is cool i i think of simeon like that's just true i think of simeon bruce when i think about willpower uh because of the uh, rule for willpower it's hilarious and it's a great joke but i can't think of any one figure necessarily that to me is like ah yeah he got willpower um what I did choose, and this might be off-brand, and Malcolm, you can get mad at me for answering this way, but I chose the utility belts because the utility belt gave you Indom, which at the time was one of the cheapest ways to give someone willpower. Okay. Um, so yeah, I chose I chose the Batman utility belt for for willpower. I mean, I would still rule because... it as like willpower nowadays. Yeah, you'd have to, yeah. right? Otherwise, it'd yeah, just exactly. Do nothing. Indom, not yeah, literally nothing. <laughs> um, but yeah, so like that's because. I know when I was playing, I was like, man, I love the Captain America with Thor's hammer, but he's 170 points with no willpower, you know, like that stuff. Or uh, I guess also when I think of willpower, I think of like the by Odin's beard ATA, which gave willpower on your top click to as guardian people like that one was also another great like means of willpower. But I never thought of a specific figure. I thought of things that gave people willpower because willpower was always something I wanted to give somebody. Yeah. Not necessarily remember, something where I was like, oh, yeah, they have it. You know? Do you remember a specific uh, resource that on click two gave out willpower? And so people would click it to click two and then just leave it there for the rest of the game. Is that the uh, Sins? No. Or Phoenix Force? What is this? Supreme Intelligence. <laughs> oh, yeah. Okay, I did Side that too. Step, I, yeah, how did I, step TK, how did I miss that? And then yeah. the second click was Outwit, or not Outwit, uh, Stealth willpower stealth willpower yeah i literally played a team at like a wko on stealth willpower really the whole rest of the game. Willpower. yep i mean also you know man i should shout out 
the only time I ever actually played that, I had to borrow it. <laughs> so that's why I don't remember it. But yeah, okay, you know what? Shout out to Supreme Intelligence also for being the super cheap. Also, like 12 points, like two points under yeah. a complete bat belt uh, for give a handing out willpower. Thank you, Supreme Intelligence. You're a real one. Honestly, pick, still, we both I think one of the it? least broken game elements. Oh, I think yeah. You still pay 12 points and play that. And it's like, what click are you They're landing balanced. on? Like, are you landing on uh, in cap, super senses, precision strike, prob, regen, outwit? Like, what are you landing on where you're like, yeah, that's worth 12 points? Because you're probably not right. starting a 12 point, 12 points on a already costed figure for size that. TK because there's like 15 point figures that can do that. So like, what are you True. playing this on now? I I like it. I actually don't mind the Supreme Intelligence, and I mostly like it because that last click where you can uh, stop turning the dial and then give the character a power action to bring Supreme Intelligence on, and then st- always wanted like, to pull that off. Oh, I've that, seen it before. That's like, oh really? <laughs> And oh, then, man. yeah, like you have old Galactus before Galactus was Galactus. Yeah. You have on full map. map reach. It can do a max of three yeah. damage, and it's like three damage and it's locked, but you have full map reach for an opposing character of 100 15, points or more. Team range. I uh, yeah. love it. Um, oh, that's hilarious. So when I thought of willpower, I thought of somebody that could do this all day. So I went with <laughs> Sam Wilson from Nick Fury in the. Uh, uh, Agents wow. of Shield Back set. Captain America. Yeah, okay. I couldn't find an actual Steve Rogers that had printed willpower or special willpower like on his. He's either in Dom. He was or normally in Dom. Yeah, have it. yeah. You see so Dom. I had to go with Sam Wilson because he has uh, ESD and Vuln super senses and willpower. So truly, he's he's a twenty wow. for range. He's reducing by two. He has a rollout and he has willpower. All for 130 points. I feel like this this Captain America has gotten a lot better. Plus, he makes the Red Wing bystander and Gosh. the three pigeon bystanders. And you look at like how long his dial is for 130 points, and you're uh, like Dah. six clicks. Yeah, six clicks. It Not does amazing. seem. Yeah, pigeons. I used to play this guy a lot, though. He made the pigeons. It's so funny. I don't even think they were autonomous either. That was the sad thing about the pigeons. Were they? I don't think autonomous existed. Now they weren't. No, they were tiny. Didn't. They were tiny with sidestep. That's what it was. Tiny flight sidestep. And then, you know, Red Wing was like actually good, you know, like charged blades. Last time oh, I man. saw this Captain America, he made the pigeons and I was running the serpent. So I triple targeted the pigeons with the serpent and his like 13 attack or oh. 14 attack and oh. got fear tokens. And I felt pretty bad. Not going to lie. So gross. Felt pretty Ordering bad. Poor pigeon. Uh, that's a good pick, though. That's fun. Uh, next up. Is invincible. These last few powers are tough. Invincible and vulnerability impervious. Um, invincible, though, and I really hate to say it, the first figure that came to mind about how annoying it was to try to get past invincible to then deal this character damage was Unimind. So I did choose Unimind. Not That's proud fair. of it, but yeah. yeah, I would either say like, <clears throat> as far as figures go, I would say Unimind and Exodia always made me think of yeah. Invincible. So Exodia had like a special type of invincible kind of thing. It yeah, wasn't it was really five invincible, but it was it was kind of invincible. It was like only takes one damage. So you could poison him and he would take one. Or you could deal him like twelve bad. damage and he'd take one. Um but when I think of Invincible, I think of Superman. Like out of oh, all boo. the characters I I know out of all the characters in comic books. If anyone can tank something heavily, it's Superman. So he's truly invincible. So I went with Superman Prime, the 2019 convention oh, exclusive. Um, he has, let's see, 11 clicks. And out of those 11 clicks, only five of them aren't invincible. So oh, wow. six invincible clicks out of 11. Okay. Um, okay. And then he's, yeah, he's got, like, the Healy stuff and all the other things, colossal stamina, blah, blah, blah. But, yeah, that's what I think of. I think of somebody that shouldn't be able to take a ton of damage. I think of Superman Prime. He sun-dipped for, like, a billion years so that, oh, sorry, it says right here, 15,000 years hibernating in the sun. 
so he shouldn't be able it's to take damage. Long. But maybe he does. Like if you if you hit him, he does. So next up is impervious. If I'm being honest, I think of impervious more so as Superman than anyone. Like impervious rather than invincible. But uh, I'll, I'll digress. I didn't choose Superman. Um, then I was like, who's the other character I think of a lot with the thing of impervious? And that is Colossus. And I chose okay. Probably to me the go to one is Jugger Losses here from Fear Itself, one of like the coolest Colossus sculpts ever. I can't stop myself. How oh, could, dude. How could I ever stop my, what does it say? Uh how it's I can't even stop myself, and then his special speed is how did he ever stop? Yeah. Um so yeah. So this he is can a charge really and fun then line in comics. If he when he's given an action to use charge and he has no action tokens, and an opposing character takes damage from his attack. He can use charge as a free action. That was so big. When he came out, it was like, he gets to charge twice? He's an 11 for 4? That if he doesn't have a token, and then hits somebody, and Imagine then Imagine if damage, you gave him the charge arms. He charge again? Flurry. Oh my yeah. gosh. And he was 200 points. From yeah. 11 for 4, 200 points. He could charge twice. Max him out twice. I mean, Kurth was a, a big deal. Just because he could walk people through walls. Yeah, that's true. That was pretty, that was pretty dang cool, though. Um, to be fair, he could charge, and then he could hit someone for, like, six damage. But still, like, Al Vulture does that, and it's, like, ugh, gross, disgusting. But, yeah, this this Colossus, I think if he's got top dial impervious, he's got some impervious invulnerability. I also think of invuln, but I think of Colossus, too. I, oddly, I don't really think Invincible with him. I think, like, invuln and imperv yeah. Colossus most of the time. If you've never read um, the Fear yeah. Itself set, or never set, if you've never read the Fear Itself comic... Um, just like pick up the comic scans for like when Colossus gets the Sidorak jam because it well, is Well, that's not in the really... main Fear Itself story. In the main Fear Itself story, we see him like right. do like two things. We don't see much. He had to get the, the X-Men, X-Men Fear Itself side, side story. Yeah. yeah. But it is yeah. a really cool little side story. Um, obviously, Juggernauts gets, gets taken over by Kurth, one of the hammer right. wielders. So that's why Colossus is able to pick up the jam. But uh, really cool little like side story that happens um so when i think of impervious i think of somebody that's nearly that kind of strength but like not necessarily like always all the time kind of thing so i would have gone with like binary but i went with the normal carol danvers captain marvel from captain america and the avengers the super rare oh okay the drop a chewy kind of captain marvel so for 150 mm-hmm. points she starts with impervious she has stop Does she with at 150 she has impervious yeah. i thought i oh stop clicks are invulnerability no yeah. she starts no invulnerability. stop clicks are invincible invincible yeah. oh at 150 okay i'm so used to her at invulnerability 95 points man yeah at 95 okay, points, she's, yeah, she's even more scary at 95 points, but uh, just because like the the point reduction. But no top click, she has impervious, and uh, that's yeah. the only point line that I've ever played her at. She's really crazy. Um, obviously, the stats aren't quite keeping up with like the point value, but uh, she has enough stop clicks to make it worth it. And like I don't know, I just think of when I think of Captain Marvel, I'm like, yeah, she can take like a ton of damage in the right circumstances. Yeah. You know, I know everybody always used like, she would ding one, you know, ping like for one damage. Right. But part of that special was if she already like, they had, like the vehicle keyword or whatever, she dealt them like three damage. Did anyone ever, I've never did. Did anyone like ever have it where they dealt a vehicle, three penetrating damage or something with yeah. her? If you when have, please write into the show. I don't, it, I, I mean, I feel like if you ever run an ID card in silver and someone's ever like, oh, I'm running oh. the, like, dune buggy, and then you're just like, Pfft. it's dead. And it's completed, yeah. Three pen, it's dead. Did you even want to? Is that even, like, the best play? Even though it's, like, way more damage, is that even the best play compared to, I mean, she could kill it I mean, it's turn, so maybe five it points for 30. Yeah, I mean, it's... That's yeah, true. Yeah, it's a pretty good trade. I, I don't know um, if the dune buggy dies, but it definitely gets hit to its, like, stop goal. Yeah. Next up is old Carl Lucas or uh, Luke Cage here. Uh, oh my gosh, I just spoiled it. Sorry. Next up is invulnerability, <laughs> but I chose I chose Luke Cage. Uh, yeah, invulnerability. I always think Luke Cage. I think technically it should be invincible because he you know 
reduce anything, right? So technically, you should feel like Luke Cage is like an invincible guy, reduces penetrating damage. But they give him invulnerability 90% of the time. And to be fair, a lot of those times is I mean, before Invincible existed. Um, there was a comic called The Invincible Iron Man, but I never think of Iron Man oh, I don't in think this it, game when I think of Invincible. It's either. Yeah. Um, but like Luke Cage, classically... Uh, and you know what? Even for the longest time, it wasn't until Age of Ultron storyline OP where he got two clicks of Invincible top dial and then Earth X he had Invincible. But all the other ones are all invulnerability. So maybe that's why I just think of invulnerability with Luke Cage. But I chose the one from Avengers Defenders War who could specifically reduce penetrating damage. Uh, he also had willpower. So, hey, there's another dude with like willpower on a special defense. But yeah, I actually really liked this Luke Cage. For 50 points, he had the Marvel Knights. He had the invuln, reduced willpower, you know, or invuln willpower, reduced penetrating damage. Really solid. He's only gotten better with the change. But uh, yeah, when I think invulnerability, I do just, I think Luke Cage. Okay. Uh, Simeon, who, what Luke Cage did you pick? <laughs> Uh, I didn't pick Luke Cage. Invulner- so when I was thinking of vulnerability, I was like, this person isn't invulnerable. Or, oh, they're invulnerable. Uh, this person isn't invincible. This person isn't impervious to damage. Um, but they are better than tough. And so I thought of a robot. I thought robots robot. might be a little bit more than tough. So I went with the new uh, X Men X of Swords legacy card the sentinel mark five so technically also would have been like the normal mark five from the original set but i specifically picked the legacy card one just okay. because it's easier to look up um but yeah starts with three clicks of invuln goes to three clicks of toughness two clicks of esd two clicks of regen and then another three clicks of invulnerability another three clicks of toughness, another two clicks of ESD, and then a last two clicks of regen. So, yeah, the, like the, the new Sentinel Mark V Legacy card, I mean, it's just a giant Sentinel. So I always thought they should be pretty invulnerable. Most Sentinels have invulnerability, regardless of like what point value they are. That's normally like the defense power they have. It doesn't protect anything against... Uh, like penetrating psychic blast or exploit weakness but it just makes sense like it just like truly to me it's it's like a automated or it's like an automaton whatever um yep. so it's not going to be great with defense it's just going to be built the way it's built so you know if you hit it the correct way it will die so like the rise and fall okay. sentinel start with invuln the uh the two by twos from X Men Phoenix Saga. The G zero two starts with Invuln. Uh, the Ooh. Sentinel Squad one does not, because it has three okay. star lines and it does a bunch of weird stuff. But a lot I of them, a lot of them jazz. start with Invuln. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, it just makes sense for me. Big robot. It's not great yeah. at defense, but it's okay. It's no supernatural superpower abilities that let it reduce. It's just like it's metal and stuff, man. It's kind of yeah. hard to. Damage that yeah, thing. Got big old thick oh, shell. Yeah, look, like look cattle, at it. Like a Cadillac. How are you gonna get the inside of a Cadillac? Okay, Damien. Cadillacs and Subaru. Uh, <laughs> gosh, hopefully we can never make any more references to that dumb song. Eating uh, cars so, and eating bars. Where the people, where the people meet. Yeah. So you know. Um, okay. Last is Regen. I feel like we probably chose the same character for Regen, but I, I'm not 100% oh, sure. I don't. Probably, know. yeah. Most probably, likely. yeah. I don't know if we chose the same version, but I chose Wolverine. Um, oh. Okay, yeah. Oh. That makes sense. I, well, well <laughs> uh, so he has, this is the Days of Future Past Wolverine. Probably my favorite Wolverine, honestly. Uh, he's an uncommon his future past he has traded regen just period and then when he has two action tokens he can use it as a free action is really good seven clicks long combat reflexes uh with his special speed power is blades claws fangs charge and flurry and he already has precision strike on dial i loved i love this wolverine he is still probably my go-to wolverine obviously 130 is a bit much but uh nah free regen Double yeah. token, free regen, or he always has access to regen if I ever just want a power action regen. Because if you had one token from attacking, and if you were like on last click, you then power action regen, and then 
oh, free action regen. And if you still weren't top dial, at the beginning of your next turn, you could then, while you had two tokens, free action regen. It was gross, and I loved it. Uh, what Wolverine, or not, I've all said, what Wolverine did you choose, Simeon? Maybe you did, uh, but who did you choose for regeneration? Yeah, that, I also love that, like, Wolverine's, uh, the, so like, cool, the black dude. and yellow outfit is a pretty iconic one. Yeah. Um, so, no, I, I didn't go with that Wolverine. I actually went with the other tan and yellow Wolverine from X-Men. For different tan and yellow. X of Swords set. Wow. It hasn't been released yet, but uh, this is the new Wolverine, the rare that we pulled in our unboxing video. Um, the fun. One click of regen. It's on click five. And then a special trait that is when Wolverine would be KO'd by an opposing effect. Instead, don't stop turning the dial and keep turning it for the damage taken up to click 12. Then place him on this card. At the beginning of your turn, if Wolverine is on this card, heal him one click. If click 5 is revealed, your opponent places him within four squares of a friendly character. If no other friendly character is on the map that shares a keyword with Wolverine while he is on the card, KO him, and that is protected pulse wave. So... This is a Wolverine that as long as it, some of your force, if you're playing a theme team, if it, some of your force is on the team still alive, he will always come back, and then he always comes back on a regen click. Obviously, any Wolverine makes sense for regen. Any Deadpool, any... I mean, most of like the um, Weapon X stuff usually has some sort of regen, even like Dagon. Got healing and, powers, yeah. yeah. Like X-23, all of those people... But I uh, I don't think of any other character other than Wolverine when I think of regen. Whether it's Absolutely. the worst type of regen they've given him or the best type of regen that they've given him. You know, they're, if it's steel energy or actual printed regen or just weird healing mechanics with no regen. Um, weird, like, if Wolverine's on an odd click number, heal him one click. Yeah. Right? It's like, that was like Old Man Logan's, right? Something, <laughs> something odd like yeah, that. Was, yeah kind of bad uh the one of the better ones was the uh the regenesis set when it was uh if he's oh, on like, the really special good. theme team on the special theme team it was just free heal him one click and uh he had a stop click so, yeah There's two stop clicks. two stop Stupid. clicks for 120 points so yeah free heal him one click <laughs> it's just all right it's my turn i'm gonna flurry you and then I'm going to free heal one back to top dial or I'm going to free heal one flurry you or you know like you just had like so much choice Wolverine doesn't technically have that kind of choice he's not just like yeah I'm going to heal now Ugh. but like he's, right. he always heals so um yeah I like the well, the Wolverines that just don't die for whatever reason and there's been several of them made in the last couple of years so we've been spoilt on the don't die type of Wolverines. True. That is uh, all of these powers. So tune in next week, Malcolm, and then all the other listeners when we answer ooh ah, oh damage. baby. Damage powers. Damage powers. That's a lot of damage. That's a lot of damage. Really, really quickly, uh, just because it's fun, that the Wolverine I mentioned uh, was part of my like first competitive team. This is like around 2014. I believe it had to have been because I used the Phoenix Force. It was like Wolverine, the Phoenix Force, like the invulnerability thing, and then like whatever else just to make it like 30 points. Because then I had Bishop from Wolverine and the X Men. It was like weird, don't die tech, uh, like team. Because when Bishop rolled on to clicks three through seven, when he would take damage, it was like a 50 50. He would take one damage if you rolled a one through three, or you would heal up for a six where he heals two, right? So it was my weird, don't die pseudo whatever uh, competitive team that I tried to build after like a year of getting whooped at hero clicks, getting absolutely like thrashed, you know, like Man. locally slash with like my friend I will and say, my friend had the gall. No, no, no. My friend had the gall to say, wow, that's a really unfun team you built. When the first time we ever played hero clicks, Levi, you played the book of the skull, my dude. So don't <laughs> tell me about an unfun hero clicks team. Okay. I'm playing Bishop and Wolverine. All right, you were, you were going to say, Simi. <laughs> I was just yeah. going to say, yeah. uh, in the classic mobile game, Marvel Strike Force, Bishop only uh, works with Jubilee, and it's very strange. <laughs> it's strange. 
Um, that's Why all I'm saying. It's weird. It's weird yeah, that like weird. so Jubilee is like fireworks and blasts Bishop, and then he's like, "Oh, I'm all strong. I'm gonna blast this guy." Because that's like Bishop's whole thing is redirecting energy and stuff. Right? Yeah. He's but it's like hurt he couldn't bit. like he couldn't work with Gambit or Cyclops or like anybody it's like Storm. I don't know anyone. No. Yeah, it's weird that it has to be. Specific, yeah, it's specifically yeah, it's to Jubilee, specifically Jubilee. Where, like they they do a team up. Same with uh, Deadpool and Domino do like a special team up, and I'm just like, okay, sure, sure, why not? I've never read comics. I don't care yeah. about comic accuracy. Sure, sure. Why not combo these people that barely ever work together? I mean, X Force technically is a thing that happens occasionally, but like, let's pretend <laughs> like it's Every always Deadpool and Domino. Sure. Why not? You know who people always leave out of X Force, like like going. They always leave like Archangel out of it. Yeah, real bad for him. It's like, yeah, He's man. You know, not even path. a character in Marvel Strike Force. Oh, is he not? Yeah. Uh, guess rip. who's on the Marvel Strike Force? So like, HeroClix players, X-Force. you are spoiled when it comes to keywords. Guess who's on the Marvel Strike Force X Force keyword team? Is it like Deadpool, Domino, Wolverine? Like that's it? No, it is Deadpool. Oh. Domino, Cable, oh, Cable, um, okay, Negasonic, Teenage Warhead, oh, okay. and X twenty three. You can't oh. even. That's literally the only five. It's a it's a five person team on Strike Force, wow. so it can't be any more, any less. It has It'd to be, be these else. five for X Force. <laughs> you can't even play Wolverine on X Force. It's messed up, dude. One of the teams that he basically like helped find, hey, like found, yeah, he you know, like. Cyclops was like, hey, I need some dirty work done, dirty Canadian man. And Wolverine was like, yup. And, uh, yeah, and, like, fast forward, it's it's Cable and Domino and Deadpool and X-23 Bad. and Negasonic Bad. Teenage Warhead, who, once again, not comic accurate. Like, I don't know if they've rewritten her in the last couple of years, but never in her comic oh. run did she ever explode well, you see, Simeon, she was in the Deadpool movies. And even though she was yeah. never on the team they called X-Force in the Deadpool movies, she was in the Deadpool movies. Sure. So, it's fine. Yeah. I don't even That's... have a problem with that. It's just the fact that, like, the other characters that have been on X-Force aren't available for right. the X-Force yeah. keyword. Like, oh, Wolverine, at the very yeah. least, should have every X keyword. He's been on X Force. He's been in X Factor. He's he's helped all the teams. He's been an Avenger. What the heck? Come on, a Fantastic Four member. Wolverine. Wolverine for a guy that hates people says he hates people. Yeah, he, like, he's adopts, real needy. He adopts and helps out more kids like Jubilee, X twenty three, Spider Man, one random dude, Spider Man. Like he's like a father figure for so many people. Uh, and then like. <laughs> Hung out with the Runaways for a bit, helped them, you know, like, joins, like, the most freaking teams, Fantastic Four, Avengers, every single X team. Um, I don't know if he's ever been a defender, but probably, you know, like, I'm, I'm, beast, doing, I'm, a, Why not? I'm, a, I'm a grumpy like, loner. Hey, we need some cheese cut, Logan, get over here. And he's like, yeah, I'll slice yeah. it up real nice, defend this uh, cheddar Okay, so we're we are almost at two hours, and I really wish <laughs> we didn't spend so much time talking about what made us happy because I I want to get into some of these awesome listener questions. Yeah, speed um, run them. Ah, speed run. Okay, well, so we'll try to speed run them. Uh, ben J says, uh, if food franchises slash serial mascots were to be clicked, who would you like to see, and what power set would they have? Uh, I want to see Captain Crunch with the ability to uh, ramming speed slash dolphin symbol. Slash make water Captain Crunch for my cereal mask. I don't even like Captain Crunch, but that's what I'm going okay. with. Ben Jones, I'm going um, with the uh, the the Meat Canyon version of uh, Tony the Tony Tiger, the Tiger that has. I hate you so much. You're going to say that. You're a scumbag. Oh, just, just have a nice bowl of cereal. Yeah, who's my nice uh, little piggy? Uh, oh yeah. Uh, uh, and I, I can, he controls really people's me. minds and ruins their lives. So, mm. how sports mind though, control Tony the Tiger? Uh, okay, Luke Luke says favorite ice cream flavor and then ice cream item. Uh, so cone, bowl, parfait, etc. Uh, my favorite ice cream flavor is gravel travel. You can get that at Stenslands in Sioux Falls or Sioux City, I think. 
Uh, what it is is it's like caramel slash salt. It has like salted caramel slash like peanut butter slash like something else, but it's gravel travel. My favorite ice cream item is the wooden spoon. Something about the wooden spoon with ice cream hits weird. so different. But it was why is okay. that weird? I mean, why that's that like weird? I mean, it might be like glass bottle Coca Cola where it's like yeah, like, see exactly yeah, that's exactly it may, what it is. I just you know I've never thought of like wooden spoon adding anything to my ice cream. Uh, so people exist for for like the uh general person i will say the cotton candy blizzard from dairy queen was usually my go-to but as a person that's never liked butter brickle i will say the cone flower blackstone blackstone brickle yeah so this is like an omaha only blackstone uh brickle they're like butter brickle version at cone flower Holy cow. Like, I, I did not like butter brickle. And then I tried this, and it literally made me, like, fall in love with their version of butter brickle. I still okay. don't like normal butter brickle, but it's always, always waffle cone. Always waffle okay. cone or sugar cone. I'm not a cone guy. That's why I like the wood spoon, because I always get it in the dish, because I don't like fighting yeah. melting ice. Well, you don't have an uh, option at Dairy meat. Queen. They don't. Well, I guess well, that's Dairy true. Queen does have cones, just you, not for You blizzards. get the cups. You yeah. can get the cups. Uh, like if we're gonna do Dairy Queen, uh, shout out to the Reese's Cookie Dough Blizzard. Literally, like the best Blizzard they ever made, and it's off the menu, and I cry every time I think about it. But I guess I'm I'm not as fat anymore, probably because they took it off. So I'm like, why do you want to go to Dairy Queen anymore? Ugh. Yeah, I still get their um, flamethrower burger, like double flamethrower burger. That's like too, too hot for me. Two thousand five hundred calories. Gosh, yeah, it's bulk and season. Uh, Andrew sure. Andrew Klinger says, uh, "Does Solemn reduce penetrating damage?" You bet your butts he does, Andrew. Uh, he do <laughs> watch uh, our YouTube. It, oh, you do, yeah. Hey, Solemn check out the, the pen damage. YouTube channel. Uh, we play a battle royale. If you ever wanted to see a battle royale play, there's not a lot of battle royale content on YouTube. So just check out our YouTube channel. Check out our latest X of Ten of Swords battle royale. It's really fun, and if you enjoyed it. Let us know because we had a ton of fun filming it. Battle Royales are literally like some of the most fun ways you can play Hero Clicks. Like going forward, if you want us to a battle royale of an old set, of a new set, if you want to send us in like a cube, if you ever know what a magic draft cube is, you basically design your own set. You can take figures from all sorts of sets, make a cube if we have them. Maybe we'll do it. I've always wanted to build a cube and do a battle royale with it. Like make my dream Captain America set out of pre existing figures and yeah. rank and sign them together. We've done that, that could before. be fun. It's, yeah. I mean, we've done that at uh, Krypton before, at, so at Krypton? it's pretty nice. cool. Uh, but yeah, let us know because the battle royale format is super fun. That's what Andrew's referencing, and it was it was dope. Uh, His own Bill asks: Since Elon isn't buying Twitter, does this mean the Dial H accusation isn't happening either? I have not checked. I thought he was going to fully acquire Dial H for Hero Clicks. Um, oh. We might have to ask him again. It might have fallen under the rug. No, Simeon, no, you, no. Since you know? uh, since he's tied up in litigation, he did canceled the dial h acquisition so it, we will it, be filing suit since he did not right. finalize the deal after promising to um hopefully that will get us several dollars um yeah several dozens of dollars perhaps but uh yeah, he is tied up in litigation so it everybody might be like years um, before this happens so it might be a while uh to anybody that bought into the h coin um it's not worthless it may be worth less for a little bit as simeon <laughs> lets you know however you can convert them yeah. to the new calder coin using simeon swap uh if you if you wish to yeah, so if you're you into the, the digital coins. currency uh h yeah. coins h coins will never go to complete zero it might just be it's, a lot of zeros won't. Yeah, it might just be a, a lot, lot of, of decimal 0. places. Zero point zero zero zeros. Yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But if you convert convert them to the new Calder coin that we just developed, um, right. your H coins will be safe momentarily as Calder coin. Uh, of course, you can hang on to H coin and uh, double invest. You know, you can't lose right. money if you just keep investing. Totally Every you. time it drops, if you pay in more, technically your average is still staying the same. So that's fine. Just keep doing that. Uh, Squirrely Chance asks if AEW was to produce a Wave 1 set what wrestlers would you want to see so AEW is a uh, wrestling promotion for those of you that don't know if you're wrestling fans you do know um, 
I have them all written out here, actually. So let's say it's an 18-figure set. I'm going to run past it, see if Simeon agrees. I say Kenny Omega, Orange Cassidy, Jungle Boy, Chris Jericho, MJF, Luchasaurus, Matt Jackson, and Nick Jackson, Adam Page, Brian Cage, CM Punk, Dan Housen, Sting, Darby Allen, John Silver, and his best friend, I guess, Alex Reynolds, Hook, and then Mr. Brody Lee as number 18. I think we clearly give Brody Lee uh, the big guy trait, as well as Brian Cage. The dude's humongous. He may not be like a big guy, like like a, a giant necessarily, but he's so thick. I don't know how to say it. Um, <laughs> yeah. That is my, that is my, probably my dream AEW set, personally. You got that's that Hangman right. out of Cage yeah. in there. You got Kenny O, you got Orange Cassidy, you have Jungle Boy, in the Jungle Express with Luchasaurus, you have Sting and Darby, you have Ron Silver, Alex Reynolds, Brody Lee, good representation for Dark Order. You got Hook in there, you have Dan Housen in there, they're a you know, tag team. Uh, Nick and Matt Jackson, you know, like uh, Young Bucks, I don't know. It seemed, seemed solid to me. Yeah. Um, you didn't say, you didn't say Sting or Samoa Joe. I said Sting. I had oh, Sting and Darby okay. in there. Never mind. I forgot that Samoa Joe is, I guess, in AEW now. I, I would love to see a Stay, uh, Samoa Joe, though. That way I could recreate TNA with AEW figures. <laughs> be awesome. I guess the, the only um, one I would add then would be Captain Insano from The Water. Oh, Boy. right. Because just, yeah. you know what is topical and great for wrestling nowadays? A movie from right 1995. Yep. So Captain oh, Insano joining uh, <clears throat> AEW. Great timing. Beautiful. Uh, uh, wow, Jeff Hardy is still listed. That Yep. Yep. He's still listed. Yep. At least he is. Yep. Uh, Eroy Jack asks, "Would you guys ever consider running Chase Scarlet Witch assigned Galactus? If so, why or why not?" I'm trying to think. Like, what does Galactus give her? Gives her power cosmic. Gives her a range value of five. Gives her she access to like the extra yeah, powers. So she doesn't. Yeah. Need, she doesn't need range value. It gives her protected outwit. And you have to think um, it's an equipment, so you're giving up the dark hold in order yeah, to do that. That's the big I don't, thing. I don't think better than the dark hold, and then she gets power cosmic once she hits her stop for the rest of the game. So if you're playing her at full, I would say, I, I, yeah, I don't think so. I don't think I, personally. Yeah. If I'm playing uh, Scarlet Witch, I'm probably playing like some sort of Avengers, like Sicarian Iron Man kind of thing. Or maybe sure. like Scarlet Witch and Prime Vision. Um, this is like not like necessarily competitive. This is just like highly competitive casual build. Uh, I don't think it's gonna win anything. But even then, I, I don't probably put Galactus on her specifically. I would probably save Galactus for like Prime Vision at like a hundred or something, or uh, Sicarian Iron Man if I'm not going to give him the Cloak of Levitation or something like that but no I don't think I think Scarlet Witch her best protection is Barrier and like a competitive environment I think her best protection right. is Barrier and like Prime Bishop and like those are both usually about cheaper options than a Protected Outwit because really even with Protected Outwit uh, like a precision strike and flurry. Well, is gonna do it's another thing with, with honestly, just with like good placement, it doesn't even have to be protected out with, right? If you can do yeah. the whole weird body uh, thing, and, and then if you also do uh, the rune marker, so if they even get that close to you, like if you make it so the only way for them to outwit you is to get that close to you, then they no longer have outwit, you know what I mean? Like yeah. the rune marker, or, or sorry, the chaos marker. Pardon I mean, me. in silver, um, like. Exodus yeah. plus Scarlet Witch is kind of cool. I'd never yeah. like tried to play it, but solid. it might work. Like, I don't yeah. play like the the few builds that I have with Scarlet Witch do not use a theme team at all. But um, obviously, there's ways to do it, and you could right. assign Galactus. I just personally wouldn't because I, I think Galactus I... best works with like a close up piece that like a, like a sky tyrant right. or like somebody that's close next to people that yeah. also make a lot of attacks if you want to get galactus out like there a, and off don't to keep, die keep dial rolling. constantly attacking kind of piece that you don't want to get it out with Personally, yeah. one of my favorite for galactus was like at hulk yeah immortal hulk oh yeah you know, i always like close combat you know making the free charges making a lot of attacks um anyways next up is uh, actually i want to i want to answer disco tech's 
question before we get to Matt Reed's. Okay. I want to spend a little bit more time on Matt Reed's. So Andy asks, so what beer does Wolverine drink about Captain America? Uh, so in movies, we've only seen Cap drink wine and then whatever was potentially at the party uh, in Age of Ultron. So I don't know about beer in comics. He's definitely, you know, cracked a few back with the boys. If you're asking me what my favorite beer is, I don't drink beer. I think it is all disgusting. It's hard to, to drink. It's, it is carb water. Um, real tough. Yeah, bread water. Um, bread water. Um, so as much as I want to be biased and be like, Captain America is a Tennessee whiskey man. Made in America. I've never seen him drink whiskey either. So he just probably has like whatever American beer they have like randomly. Because I've seen him have like a beer and a steak in like a comic before. There's oddly enough, there's quite a lot of comic panels of Captain America sitting at a diner. Um, believe it or not, that is a, a what would you call it? A, uh, a consistent thing. It's like, okay, we've seen it before. Wolverine is Canadian, so he's probably chugging a Canadian lager. Honestly, like in most comics where I've seen Wolverine drink, it's like some sort of pale ale kind of like looking thing, which could be any variety of stuff. But I imagine Wolverine being a long lived kind of dude. Also with his like healing factor, it's probably like some high ABV stuff that he's trying ah, to like... a cliche it's a cliche when uh... something happens and it's like okay we've seen yeah, it. it's yeah, a yeah. cliche all right continue simeon <laughs> no. figure it out no yeah uh so yeah i i've oh, always imagined God. wolverine downing like some uh like bourbon air like bourbon aged ales like something that's like a 10 percent or a 15 percent because it would take quite a few of those for him to actually feel it probably um that's just my personal opinion. Maybe he's just drinking the light lagers just for the, f- just like for the flavor. Who knows? Wolverine drinks for flavor. I, can't, I mean, he I might. Can't that. He really might. Who knows? It's fair. Um. All right. <laughs> Matt Reed's question. Oh, boy. You guys have done other trends on YouTube uh, for Hero Clicks. Uh, we've done like, you know, hot wings, whatever, all sorts of stuff. Uh, and he's wondering when Dial H is going to do Hero Clicks boxing to have hosts from other hero clicks podcasts box for charity also who would you call out uh, to box in a match first i'll box all, anyone first of all okay, yeah go ahead yes. for charity as soon as they issue the challenge like we are down 100 percent whenever 100%. we just need literally any other podcast to be willing to fight for donations and until yep. that happens, I mean, yeah, it's going to be a uh, – let me look at my fake clock on my wrist here. Uh, never. But, uh, yeah, anyone willing to be punched in the face for money, I'm, like, willing, not to, money I'm for willing you to do it. Also, no, 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 not for, for us. other people. Yeah, yeah not for, for charity. Our, not for you, for charity. Yeah. Simi and I know about paying for charity. We took plenty of chair shots for our respective charities earlier this year that you can watch on YouTube, episode 400. Um, I love it. Great. So, uh, when would Dial H do HeroClix boxing uh, for charity? Immediately, as soon as we like had contenders. Cer- currently, we oh, have yeah. no contenders. There's no contenders right. for Dial. There's no H. challengers. There's no yeah. one that challenges us, Simeon. No. no one's on our level. Yeah. Facts. I'll even do. Facts. I'll do like one hand behind my back. You want? You want to hit me in the face a few times and give com- some bucks to charity? I'll do that. I put my eyebrows on the line for episode 400. You think I won't let you try and punch me in the face? That's fine. I'll put that on the line, too. Nice. Nice. So, yeah. I hope hope that uh, is a satisfactory answer, Matt Reed. And like I said... Well, he does does say, who would you call out to box in the match? And I... This is like celebrity hero clips. I really wish there was someone I was, like, bad with. You know, someone who I was just like, man, I see that guy at a tournament and stand that dude. No, there's not really <laughs> anyone. Um, I'm really trying to think. Is it, who, who do I like, steer clear of? There's not really anyone like that I can think of. Not as far as podcasts go. No. You know, or even other content creators. I'm just I trying to think of as that is. content creators that I wouldn't instantly fold. And so I'm like, there's Calder, who could probably take a couple punches. 
Um, I would say a few, a handful. Yeah, at least at least a fistful. There's Scott Porter who could probably outpunch me. I feel like Scott Porter's probably in a little bit. Scott Porter's shape. old man, like yeah. forty something. Like but 30, I mean, 30. yeah, but he's. Yeah, I should well, call him an old man. He's, he's in great in shape. shape. He's keeping. He's in, in good really shape. good shape. He would be and the one he, person I got, wouldn't be confident. You've got like Aries Edge who's doing like dishes, and you know. He his triceps are going to be on he fire he's, doing those dishes yeah, all the time. He, he snaps that wrist and pops you in the chin, and you're going down. Uh, I think little, I got the he's reach got on earrings him. I think I got like the reach on him, but he's got like brass knuckle. Where is he from? Boston? Is he from yeah. uh, Maine? I'm like one of those like from, trashy uh, boats places. He's from some place where they like boats, so he's like used to yeah. ropes and punching people on docks. Oh, man. Um, calloused hands with those ropes. Let's see. Yeah. Uh, I could probably take, see, the Eagle cast has five people. I could probably take two-fifths of the Eagle cast. Oh, yeah, you know what? Time. Okay, who is the guy that said he was better than me because he was like a rancher, not a ranch hand? I'll call oh, out that oh. dude. Oh, yeah. Brian. Brian? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he owns Brian. a ranch, so he's not a ranch hand. He owns a ranch. Uh, well, hey. First off, I just say ranch hand because number one, I'm the sexiest ranch hand ever. But uh, I own a ranch too, buddy. Yeah, so, like I will step say, off of it. I feel like I don't know. That'd be a good fight. I'd like to watch that one. Probably I feel would like be a good Brian, fight. Uh, might be able to hold his own for a while. Maybe. I don't know. You doubt it though. If I'm being real. I'm definitely saying oh, you're both walking away looking a lot uglier dude. than when you walk in though. <laughs> oh, him especially because he's not starting off very pretty looking. Like, yeah. So, uh, yeah, yeah. I, I personally find him very pretty, but uh, yeah. Well, um, well, here we are. I'm calling out the st- an- the stouter, the the stronger hero clicks players. If I'm calling anyone out, because um, oh, okay, that's fair. That's I'm fair. just gonna say there's there's a lot of there's a lot of hero clicks content creators that I don't think you'd take a punch, and so I, I don't. I would say injure them. The only the only hero clicks content creator I would not feel like. 110 percent confident going into the ring with would be scott porter if we you know oh, if we count no. him as a content creator you know like yeah i would not feel confident going at scott porter i would feel i feel like probably he'd be like the little the less Hollywood than even of playing like, ground he'd be like six months of intense yeah, he'd training get some, he'd get some hollywood trainer and he'd do that's like, like, like really bone, good like spin kick and snap my yeah. neck off my head like yeah, not my head off my neck. He would literally snap my neck off my head. Neck off your head, yeah. So it's like a Minecraft still tree, there. and I'd be like, "What? Yeah, just floating <laughs> like, a, like a Minecraft tree." Dude. Like when you take <laughs> sure. the middle block out, and it's still floating. Yeah, just a floating head, and I'm just like, "Huh?" Uh, and he's he's just like, "Huh?" And then like, it falls, "Huh?" And then yeah, my neck does the like Looney Tunes like skedaddle thing and just <laughs> runs away. Oh, uh, it's great. I no, I would seriously love it if if we wanted to get four or five matches, like three matches on the card for a HeroClix charity boxing tournament. We could live stream it. That would be awesome. I would love it. I would, you know, it'd be great to try to get a handful of people in attendance. Probably have better luck just getting boxing fans in attendance than getting a bunch oh, of HeroClix sure. players. But I would like to get a handful of HeroClix players um, in attendance. I mean, that's. We would roll it's off a ways to see away, votes first, obviously. It would be a ways away. We do. Have, I would uh, say we if, do have an we episode it, yeah. five hundred coming up someday. So True. maybe that's our goal. Yeah. Is like we just start, we start talking to these people now, and we're like, hey, yeah, for if sure. you're not scared, yeah, you know, put your put your hero clicks content creator, you know, ability on the line. Yeah. Especially we'll, we'll as someone him. that uh, do you want to quit being a hero clicks content creator, or do you want to oh my enter gosh. this fight? I don't. I don't think we get anyone that one. like actually agrees oh, to that. But people, still, people wouldn't put that still. on the line necessarily. Chase is on the line. Factory sets on the line. That could be fun. Some some fun betting. That'd be great. Um. Oh, I love that. I loved everything about that question. As soon as as soon as Matt asked that question, I like send a message. I'm like, thank you so much for saying that. That's so awesome. We would love. We'd love to. We'd love to um, punch HeroClix players in the face. I think about it at every tournament. It's crazy. I don't know how. I don't know how it happens. Naturally, it comes up. There's uh, several content creators that I would put out of business. Oh baby. Oh man. That is a joke. I for say. all intents and purposes, Alex is not held legally responsible for anything Sydney and Bruce <laughs> said on the podcast. Legally, all of the things that we have said tonight have been jokes. Have been jokes. Asterisks. 
the jokes. Come at me, PJ. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> uh, I would. He's got I'd a family. Feel, I'd feel Send bad now fighting. He's PJ. got a family. Oh I, I gosh. Would. Oh, that's hilarious. Oh no. You guys are almost the same height, so it really even. That's true. Out. That's Sorry. true. We're quite literally. We're all, we're both five two. So I mean, same arm reach. <laughs> Oh gosh! All right. Oh, too much fun. Hey, if you enjoyed this episode of Daily Cheer Clicks and you want to support the show, you can donate to us on Patreon, which not only gives you loads of exclusive content like bits of the podcast that don't make it on air, uh, as well as secret videos and early looks at upcoming videos, videos that never get podcast. published. Yeah, pro- probably. Um, all sorts of fun stuff like that on Patreon, as well as you get action tokens and entering into our monthly giveaway, as well as playing some Bad Samaritan occasionally. Yeah, think about joining the podcast. Think about writing in, asking us a question on our Discord, which is, of course, only if you join the Patreon. You can get access to our Discord and our awesome community that we have built up there. Send us questions also on Twitter and on Facebook. You can also send us an email at dialageforheroclicks at gmail.com. Of course, we're almost at 1,000 subscribers, guys. So please, 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 if you haven't already subscribed yet and you're a listener of the show, go subscribe to our YouTube channel so you can get in on the giveaway as well as comment what your favorite Dial H for Hero Clicks video is on our giveaway video. It's going to be the one that automatically plays when you visit our YouTube channel. Uh, so please subscribe there. Also, tell your friends to subscribe because the sooner we can get to 1,000, the sooner we get to give all this awesome stuff away. Right now, the giveaway is for a case of Future Foundation and a uh, watcher from the What If starter set. So already a ton of great prizes, and we're adding a lot, guys. Seriously, once we get to 975, we're going to drop quite a bombshell with how many prizes we're going to be giving away, and there's even more at 1,000. So seriously, subscribe. Tell your friends and family to subscribe. Tell your dog to subscribe. Tell your mom to subscribe. Tell everyone to subscribe. Do it. Do it already. What are you waiting for? Just do it. Yeah. I'll fight you, Lucas Tom Van Hollen. Oh my gosh. Yeah. Only if your wife like signs off on it, but I will. Uh anyhow, uh if you want to fight somebody uh with hero clicks and dice, <laughs> you should check out coolstuffinc.com where they can outload you with the strongest brass knuckles made of hero clicks like uh gold bug yeah? and other brass f- colored characters. Bronze tiger, maybe. Bronze tigers, and uh, you know you got you got Batrock the leapers for all your leaping needs and fights. Uh, but yeah, definitely check them out. Coolstuffinc.com. They've got the coolest stuff in stock every day, including the latest HeroClick singles and sealed products. So check them out. Happy trails. So if you're looking for emotional satisfaction, my advice to you is seek professional hero clicks. No. Are you serious? Again? How many people even play this game? Like the hundred? Instant deadpan humor. Oh, how do six uh, people think I am funny? It's a hard day's work. Not that you know anything about that. Which you absolute fools, it's not witcher nonsense. I'm gonna make hero clicks like that forever. Are you kidding me? <laughs> hey, Google, attack someone. Let's attack Simeon because he's a jerk. Happy trails. 